Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends. And as you see, today look like uh, maybe our timing is not good. We don't have many people. Obviously people are not sharing and they are not caring. However, we do our part and the Lord is our witness. You know, I never saw a single Muhammadan speak about Christianity and he did not lie about what Christians believe. Not a single Muhammadan. Starting from Muhammad himself. I can say Muhammad is a donkey. He do not know what Christianity believe in because Muslim themselves, they say he is illiterate. So we will let it go. He is a false man. He is a liar. He is illiterate. As Muhammadan, they say. But do you think people who live today and they go in this stage and they made Islam as a career and debating Christians as a business, do you think they do not know what Christians believe? Do you think really Christians believe in what the Muslims say? Today we'll show you an example about how Muslims they lie. But I will tell you first why Muslims they can lie. Because Christians, for a long time, they are asleep. Until now, actually, if we go and see how many people are exposing Islam from the Christians, I can count them by fingers. How many Muslims defy the Christianity? Every single Muslim. It's a fact. Why? Because our priest, and they are not my priest, but they call them our priest. They spend their life teaching you that Christianity is about loving others and look like in their interpretation of love is not to offend somebody else by saying to him, your God is false, your prophet is false, your religion is false, and there is no other salvation but Jesus. When I started talking about Islam, I found a lot of Christians very upset from me. This is not how Christians should talk to Muslims. We should love Muslims. We should not offend them. Why you are saying to them what you are harsh? Why you say Muhammad? Okay, Muhammad is not a true prophet, but you don't say to a Muslim like right, your prophet is a false liar. This is hateful. And the Muslims, they notice that those Christians who grow up like this are a very easy target. Because I can put all my garbage in the top of their head and those Christians just give me hugs. They don't even refute me, they don't answer me. So it took us a lot of time to make those Christians who they are deeply sleeping for centuries to understand what we are doing. And until now, actually, there's a lot of them. They don't know what we are doing. Today, I will show you how the Muhammadan they lie about your faith. And because you are taught not to answer, You've been taught that refuting them is not your business. God will do it. The Muslims, they can fool your children and make them convert to Islam. Thanks to your stupidity and the stupidity of your monks. If we can call them monks. In fact, they are just businessmen. This is Mufti Mink, who live in South Africa, a country full of Christians. He claimed something very funny. Let us hear. I believe he died on the cross as a redemption for our sins. We Muslims say it is an injustice for us sitting here in Cape Town in this masjid to say there is a lot of adultery, a lot of armed robbery, a lot of sin. So in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this, let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner. And inshallah, that will mean all our sins are expiated. 
Do you see how filthy, low class, piece of shit this man is? Do you think this man who spent his life living in South Africa, he do not know that the Christian don't believe in what he said? According to what he said, we Christian we decide to kill Jesus so our sin can be forgiven. Let us choose the best biased person between us and crucify him for our sin. I cannot express how satanic, how demonic, how filthy, how liar, how disgusting you are. Because not a single Christian believe in the garbage you just said. The funny is that the stupid monkey, Mink, son of Muta, he himself, he have a Quran, and the Quran says the Jews, they said, not the Christians said, we crucify Jesus. The Jews. The Jews who don't believe in Jesus. I mean, in order to fool the crowd, they are willing to go against their own books. I want you to listen to it again. Listen carefully for what he said. In order for our sin to feel forgiven, let us choose the best between us and crucify him. That is what the Christians believe. He died on the cross as a redemption for our sins. We Muslims say it is an injustice for us sitting here in Cape Town in this masjid to say there is a lot of adultery, a lot of armed robbery, a lot of sin. So in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this, let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner. And inshallah, that will mean all our sins are expiated. Do you see how they lie about you? Where is your priest? When the last time you heard a priest exposing Islam in your church? I'm sure none of you. You go to the church. Let us pray for the love of the word. Let us pray for all the word. Wave your hand to Jesus. Thank you, God, our Father, out of heaven. You know, okay, we decide. Okay, you know, okay, we do the service. Everybody go home. And then your kids and you yourself, you go in the street, you meet an atheist, he asks you a question you don't know how to answer. You meet Abdul, he asks you a question you don't know how to answer. You meet an agnostic, he asks you a question you don't know how to answer. Why? Because you have a donkey claiming to be a priest, doing business. He want to finish the two hours which he paid for so he can go home and eat his steak. He don't have time for you. But look what he said, which is extremely good for us. He said, this is an injustice. What is injustice? To kill someone, never commit sin. This is what we Christians believe. However, you stupid idiot, is it justice to put someone look like Jesus in the cross? Christ was crucified because he claimed to be the Son of God. Allah, he put someone in the cross according to Islam because he is saying he is a prophet. So is it justice to put someone else on the cross. He did not claim to be a prophet. It is Jesus who said, I'm a prophet in Islam, correct? Why the Muslim want to kill him? I mean, the Jews want to kill him according to the Quran? Because he said, I'm prophet of Allah. So what Allah he do? Unjustly, he put someone, he never claimed to be Jesus. He never claimed to be a prophet. He never claimed to be any. 
Do you see how we, how we can beat them from their own words in few seconds? Do you see how low IQ they are? And do you see how lazy the Christians are? I keep asking who want to make short videos, like to summarize my videos. One, two people do it. There's hundreds of thousands of people watching my videos. And there's one, two people, three people. The rest are doing nothing. They are not exist. They are potatoes. Popcorn. But let us see what Mufti Mink himself, he said in different occasion. So we can love more. Shall we? Then you have the messengers. As I said, we believe in all of them. Every single one of them. Yeah, including Alexander the Great, including uh, Al-Khadr, uh, the guy who drank from the fountain of, you, of youth. Uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean. I mean, okay, you believe in all the messengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you cannot tell us even who they are, those messengers. Who is Yunus? Who is Saleh? Who is Al Khadr? Who is Zulkurnain? 124,000 messengers, yet you don't have a book of one of them. But we believe in them, brother and sister. Now tell us, Mr. Finger Boy, what you believe, additional to that. We believe in Jesus may peace be upon him. He had a miraculous birth, as I said. Why? Why Muhammad don't have miraculous birth? Muhammad, he don't have any. I mean, he died by poison. He was not resurrected. Allah did not take him up to heaven. He's born from a pagan woman, pagan father. The Quran full of verses, the Arab keep asking him, why you don't have a miracle? Give us a sign. And he said to them, Allah told me, wait, and I'm waiting with you. Allah told them, wait. We believe he was not known as the son of the Almighty, but rather the messenger created miraculously without the interference or involvement of a male. Why? Why he is the only one is born without the interference, inter, interference of a male. They can't explain that. And this miracle does not make sense in Islam. In Christianity, it doesn't make very much sense because he's the son of God. Who is the one? Who is the one who made Mary? If we ask the Muslim now, who is the one who made Mary have a son? They will say Allah. Who is the one who is my father? Okay, the one who made your mother have a son. You. <laughs> Those Muhammadan, they try to speak about logic, but the second you you know you you hit them with their stupidity, they stumble. So Jesus, he is the son of Mary. Who is the father of Jesus? The Muslim they say to you, the Quran says. The similarity between Jesus and Adam, you know, it's the same. Allah said to them, be and was. If you remember two days ago, we have a Muslim, he called me, he left Islam. He said to me the same. Adam and Jesus are the same. Allah said, Allah said to them, be and he was. But then we read the Quran, we will find that Allah never said be to Adam, never said be to Jesus. And it took a lot of time for Allah to finish Adam. Even Adam, he asked Allah to finish him before the sunset. And Allah used his two hands and he made mud, mixed dirt with water, and then he fashioned him and then he let the mud stay uh, uh, to dry for 40 years. And after 40 years, Allah, he breathed into him. And then Adam, even then, he is not even finished yet. It took him a lot of time to be finished. Do those people even read their book? And at the same time, we believe he was not crucified. We believe he was taken up to heaven before he was harmed by the Romans. And we believe that... Did he say by the Romans? Did he just say by the Romans? Why you Quran never say the word Roman? The Quran says that the Jews 
They crucified him. Where he got the Roman from? Chapter 4, verse 157, if you read the verses before it, you will see it's talking about the Jews. And in fact, if you read what the, what, what the Quran is saying, you will see how stupid the author of the Quran. So if we go with this donkey who he said that Allah, he saved Jesus. But the verse before it says that Allah, he did not save any of the prophet which killed by the Jews. Read with me carefully. Because of this, the Muslim translation might not matter. I don't agree with any Muslim translation, but I'm just showing you the stupidity. Because of their breaking the covenant and of their rejecting of the ayat between two bracket proofs, evidence, verses, etc. I mean, proofs, guys, proofs. Muhammad never proves. What is the proof? He can have sex with all his wives in one night without washing. Sign, revelation. Oh, okay, they refuse that of Allah. And their killing of the Prophet unjustly. Okay, hold on. Who is a Muhammadan is willing to call me immediately and give me the names of the Prophet being killed by the Jews unjustly in Islam? Just to show you how stupid this religion is, the same story, the same chapter proving Islam to be false. Anyone knows why I'm saying this is stupid? Who want to help me? Let us see if any of you is thinking with me. Why this is very stupid statement? Let us compare 155 saying the Jews they killed many prophets. 157 says the Jews could not kill Jesus. So how come Allah did not move his ass to protect all the prophets killed by the Jews, but now he decided to protect Jesus? Any Muhammadan can tell me? According to the Quran, it's a proven that the Jews, they killed many messengers of Allah. Wonderful. That means they can do it. It's in front of you. They killed them unjustly. It's not me who said that. They killed many prophets, not one prophet. So how come Allah allow the Jews to kill all those who profit unjustly? But he will not allow them to kill Jesus. Not to forget to mention that Muhammad himself was killed by the Jews. If you remember, there's a Jewish woman, she went to Walmart, she bought, she bought a, a rat poison for 50 cents, cheap one. She, no, she, is, she don't want to spend money. I don't blame her. It's not worth it. So she bought a rat poison from the shelf in Walmart. She put it for him in the food. Muhammad, after four years of suffering, he died. And then the Muhammadan, they tried to say, no, no, this is not true. It looked like they are saying that their prophet is a stupid and he say things is not true. Because the one who said that he's dying by poison is him. It looked like that the Muslims, they take what Muhammad say for granted any time except this one. So Allah want to save Jesus from the Jews, but Allah don't want to save Muhammad from the Jews. The Jews killed many, many prophets unjustly. Allah don't move his ass because he wasn't using a crazy glue. Do we have any Muhammadan? My Skype is open. Get me your shake and let me shake you and shake your God. Ah, I forgot your God. When there's a guy, he is the boyfriend of Muhammad, he died. The throne of Allah Sheikh because of his death. Have you ever heard of a God like this? Why? The throne of Allah, he Sheikh because of this guy, he died. Who is he? Shaky God. So those people, in order to win falsely an argument, they are willing to lie. And they come to us with a stupid excuse. In the previous video, he said, 
Is it fair? Is it justice to let somebody die in the cross when he commit no sin? Well, let us ask you the same question. Is it fair that Allah, he replace Jesus, who he is the prophet supposedly in Islam, by someone he is not the prophet in Islam and he never claimed to be the prophet and the, Muslims, the Jews, even they are not even targeting the guy. Is that justice? There is a, there is a sheikh, his name is Umran. Because Islam is a stupid religion, not only Muhammad is a stupid, every one of them, he give you different answer and different, uh, different religion. I hope that those who make short videos, they can make what those Muslim videos saying, like opposing each other. I mean, many of you, especially the young ones, you have time, you know, you come home, make a short video, collect, oh, look how, how funny this shake he said, look how funny that shake he said, but, but then they oppose each other so people will laugh at them. And guess what? You can even make money from it. There's many people, they make a lot of money from my videos. I don't make money in YouTube. I am not allowed even to have a commercial on my videos. But those who play my videos, they are making a lot of money. Good for you. I'm not here for that. Do something. We go to Sheikh Amran then executed the let us see what Sheikh Omran is saying give me a second uh, oh, drama Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Nahmaduhu Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen okay this one is a summary this is shorter I mean, a Muslim before he talk, he have to make a, he have to read a newspaper, praising Muhammad, the neighbor of Muhammad, the wives of Muhammad, the mother of Muhammad, the daughter of Muhammad, the the the, the, the ass of Muhammad. All of this to say two words. Okay, so Sheikh Omran, who was on the cross? Then he died. Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Exactly. Don't come with this nonsense. No, mostly I'm talking about nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when I billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. Did you hear it? Wait for judgment day with that. Did Nonsense. you hear it? Nonsense. Do you hear it? That person who was crucified, he never claimed to be the Messiah. Mufti Mink, the son of Muta, is saying, well, the Christian believe that uh, we commit sin, let us place someone in the cross, so he die for our sin. But this is not what the Christian said. When the Christian, they say, Christ, he died for our sin, that means because of our sin, he came to save us. If we are not sinners, why he will be here? If I am not sick, why the ambulance will come to me? Why the doctor will come to my home? So when the Christian they say because of our sin, for the sake of our sin, they don't mean that Jesus died in the cross, that means I can sin. That is a lie. And the Bible have all of this, and the Muslim didn't have one of the Ten Commandments. Actually, Muhammad he broke all the Ten Commandments. Isn't it the Messiah who says, not everyone say to me, God, God will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will? You can say God as much you want. You can wear a cross. You can call yourself a priest. You can, you, you can, but you will not go to heaven. 
or you did not do God will and what God will is to believe in the Messiah and to obey the Messiah and how you obey the Messiah you fight your sin you don't adopt it you don't live it you don't love it in Islam is the opposite All what you need to do, say Bismillahi wa bihamdihi 100 times and Allah will erase all your sin. Let us play what Mufti's, Mufti uh, Mink he said, just to show you how we can get him busted again and again. For our sins, we Muslims say it is an injustice for us sitting here in Cape Town in this masjid to say there is a lot of adultery a lot of armed robbery, a lot of sin. So all of those are allowed in Islam. Just do them to do them to non-Muslims. Rape non-Muslim, it's fine. Rob non-Muslim, it's wonderful. Actually, you're a prophet. This is what you do for a living. Chapter nine, verse number twenty-nine. Attack the Christian and the Jews, kill them until they pay the jizya. This is a robbery. You took their land, you took their churches, you, you took their women, you took their money, and on top of that, to make them stay alive, to let them stay alive, they have to pay you every month. So in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this, let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner. And inshallah, that will mean all our sins are expiated. See how they lie? And now those Muslims, they believe in this. They listen to the liar and they say, oh, those Christians believe in that. Oh man, that's not, that's not right. Is that what they believe? I remember once actually, a Muslim guy, he is a nice person, by the way. He is from a very good family. He came to me, he said to me, I want to talk to you, but I'm afraid to talk to you, really. He said, why? Why are you afraid? I mean, we are very like, you know, he's a very nice person. He said, promise me you will not do any harm to me. You will not be angry or... I said, okay, I promise you. He said, the teacher said to us, the Islamic teacher in the class, he said that Christians, when they get married, the priest, he have to take the wife and sleep with her first night. Can you believe how filthy they are? Those Islamic sheikhs. So those are Muslim kids. We are just a teenage. He is teaching those kids absolute false lies that when you get married, you don't sleep with your wife. The priest will take her first. He will try her for you if she is good or not. In the morning, you take her home. If you ask yourself why they are saying this to their children, because they want to make them hate you. Think of you very bad. Disgusted by just saying the word. So they will never read the Bible. They will never listen to Christian. They will never try to find the truth. You are disgusting satanic religion this is the this is the religion of the devil himself and then you find a video by Zach and Naik saying who is the one deceived who is the one who deceived the Christian or the Jew or, or, or the Muslims what Zach and Naik he say we will go back to this guy let us go to Zach and the Quran and Yuka For a surety, they killed him not. So according to the Quran, the Jews said in boast that we killed Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. And all those who Made to appear for them. <laughs> and the question, and, and what the topic is, who was the one deceived? The Muslims or the Christians? You stupid, you just said, Allah made someone appear. To look like Jesus. That means Allah is the deceiver. Allah don't have the balls to make it happen without lying. 
Allah is not God. If Allah is God, and look how they contradict themselves. A second ago, it is unjust. A second after, it is just to put someone, look, we made him look like Jesus. Those people, they were torturing him, thinking this is Jesus. And now this is just. All of this because Allah want to save Jesus. But look what happened now. If you go back to Mufti, uh, uh, the monk guy, the monkey, he said that Allah took Jesus to him before the crucifixion. Listen to it, read it, and open your heart and mind. As a Muslim, as a non-Muslim, you will find much comfort in this heavenly Yeah, book. yeah, for sure. No, no, no. Every messenger taught that there is one God and the angels and the books, good and bad fate, comes from the... That's false. That's false. Not a single messenger of Allah taught one good thing. Because how you can be following Allah who allow you to do fornication with women, she is not yours. How you can be following the true God when you are following Allah who allow you to rent a woman, you call it muta. And now the Muslim Sunni, they have many other names for those kind. They call them marriage. But in fact, it's nothing but a fornication. Zawaj a friend, which means marry, marry a friend. Well, what does that mean? You like a girl. Oh, we will not do fornication. What about we make a contract? We go to the hotel. We do boom, boom. Huh? Oh, halal. Yeah, halal. Sure, halal. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> then you go to the hotel, 7-Eleven. Boom, boom. She go home, you go home. And this is supposedly marriage. There's other marriage. It's called a travel marriage. What does that mean? Well, these days, you carry a laptop with you. A Muslim, he do not need to carry his laptop wife. They are big and beautiful. So what we do? When we arrive in the hotel in Thailand, we ask them, can you find me a wife for a week? I will be here <laughs> for a week. Or another uh, scenario, a student, he want to go to study in USA. So he go and he fool a girl and he marry her. Marry her. Yes, he marry her. For six months, he will stay in USA for six months. After six months, he said, bye-bye, I'm leaving. Who are you leaving? You marry, no marry. He said, well, I marry you, I'm a student, you know, I'm here. This is travel marriage. Tourist marriage. Marriage. So what the Mohammedan did, they changed the names of fornication and make it, call it marriage. They changed the name of robbery and they call it uh, gift from Allah. Ghanima, booty. Allah he gave you. So what happened? So Muhammad وسلم, was sent the Quran which has two things in it in this regard. One is belief and one is the Sharia in terms of law, rules and regulations. So the rules and regulations are there and the belief is exactly the same that you will find from the time of the beginning of creation. May the Almighty grant us a deep understanding. From the beginning of the creation, people believe that I can rob you, take your wife. I go to your son, to go to my son. I see his wife is standing. I see she is wearing see-through clothes and I flirt with her. From the time of God, the, you know, the, all the prophets, they practice that. That if my eyes fall into a woman, as the books of Muslim says, her husband must divorce her so the prophet can F her. And if you are a prophet of God, you have no problem if you go and if a five, six years old girl. All the prophets of God, they practice that. And not only that, in all prophet of God, they have sexual privilege. Any believing woman, she want to offer herself to the prophet so he can if her. What an ifing cult. Excuse me. This is religion. And this is what God teach. 
Abraham and the others and Adam and Noah. No, it was all the same. They all taught there is a life after death, responsibility, answerability to the Almighty. There will be a day of resurrection. You're going to die one day and so on and so forth. You are going to die one day. Do we have any Muslim here? He dared to call us. Do we have a Muslim here? He dared to call us. Anyone? I just saw an old text from a Muslim. Let us see. Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan have the courage and the knowledge to call us? As you see, Islam is invalid, exposed, stupid. Can you prove me wrong? Let us go to the Quran Yuka so we can laugh more. Where is the Quran Yuka? <coughs> Zachary Naik, anyone who asked him about Jesus, what is the proof that Jesus wasn't crucified? He said to him, do you, decide, do you know the sign of Noah, the Jonah? <laughs> what is the proof that Jesus was not crucified? Do you know the sign of Noah, a Jonah? <laughs> All right, sorry. Somebody trying to call, I'm calling him. Answer up to it. Well, he's not answering. Don't call me. I will call you. If you call me and I'm calling you in the same time, that will not work. <clears throat> Let us see if he will answer. Okay, obviously he don't want to answer, he's just playing games. Let us see other one. Uh, let us see this one. I'm just trying to call those who they are Muslim texting me. We will see which one it will work. Hello? Must be Fakira mostly. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Hello? Are you a Muslim calling me? All right. What do you want to say? Why are you are calling? I've got two questions. You have two questions. What do you think about our topic? I was not following today. What is it? The topic is that Allah, he put someone look like Jesus in the cross. Yes. Explain to us what happened. Read uh, John nineteen twenty six and twenty seven. Uh, this is Fakira. Aren't you Fakira? Changing your voice. Who? Just stupid. Read John. <laughs> yeah, in John it says, uh, "God here replaced Jesus." Absolutely. Okay, stupid Fakira. Do we have any 
real Muslim would like to talk to us. Do we have any real Muslim when I talk when I talk to us? I mean, this is the only Muslim left, the one who say the F word to his prophet, the one who is called the Arab dogs and donkeys, and liars, and his prophet is an Arab and his God is an Arab. The guy who think that Allah. Uh, sorry, Satan, he was an angel and Allah put him in jail <laughs> and he believed the Quran is corrupt. This is the only Muslim left. What is the Muslims? Who is a Muhammadan there to call us? I can talk to you through text. Muslim, why are Muslim? We are Muslim, we are one. Well, I don't know, my friend, your name doesn't make sense because this is against your prophet statement. I don't know why the admin, he uh, maybe YouTube, uh, block your text. This guy, he said, I can talk to you through text. Uh, okay, we are a hero. But look at your name. We are Islam, we are one. This is not what your prophet said. You know, I believe strongly that every Muslim, he have a fantasy religion, have nothing to do with the religion of Muhammad. Your prophet, he says, that the most deceived, divided people in the world are the Muslims. Is that true? The funny is, every single one of those potatoes, Mufti Mink and Zakir Naik says, Brother Sister, because Islam is very clear. We believe in one God. And the Quran is so clear. And then we will find, there are prophets saying, that the Jews are 70, 71 sect, the Christian are 70, 71 sect, or 72, and the Muslim will be 73 sect. So look like the clear Quran, which is protected by Allah, made the Muslims 73 sect and the Bible which is not protected by Allah made the Christians less divided and one of them, one of those sect will go to heaven. Which means if you are a Jew or a Christian, you have a better opportunity to go to heaven. So how you say we are Islam, we are one Muslim? Are you giving your prophet a big finger? The one you put in your nose, as all Muslims do in the mosque? I remember when your prophet used to go around the Kaaba to clean the snot from the walls of the Kaaba. And you wonder what kind of Muslims are those Muslims who they are putting their snot on the walls of the Kaaba. The Jews, they write a letter and they put it between the rocks in the wall of the temple. The Muslim, they dig their nose and they put a snot on the wall of the Kaaba. Is that a religious practice? Maybe you are united by the snot. In fact, in the time of Muhammad, dogs used to go and piss inside the mosque and Muhammad never cleaned the mosque after dogs. Do we have any Muhammadan beside those who they can answer me in text or make videos to refute me speaking to themselves? Uh, CP, you lied about the numbers 3117. Only the King James Version use term women, children, other version or SV are more truthful use the term girls ah, my friend my friend okay what is the book of number in Islam so we can read it mr. Harry Butter let us go to the book of number in Islam 
I mean, why you are going to the Bible and now you are saying, well, you know what? The Bible is a translation. I don't accept translation. What translation you accept for the Quran? Which even Arabic Quran you accept? Same time, potato. What if I show you the story in the book of number in the Quran? Do you dare to call me? Huh? Do you dare to call me? I will show you the exact story of the book of number, chapter 31, in the Quran. Potato! Now he will say, uh oh. Christian Brands is going to spank my God. Now we thought we have something against Christianity. It says kill everybody. In fact, the Jews, they did not kill anyone. That's why they disobey God. Idiot. And this is what your Quran is saying. The Quran condemning them for not killing everyone. Potato. Potato. <laughs> Do we have any Muhammadan? He have the courage and the knowledge to call me and not to be humiliated. I got all your laundry. It is here. And this is why all of you, you are living in fear. Anyone? You need to remember one thing, Muhammadan, that your religion is a counterfeit of many religion. It's a counterfeit of the Hindus, counterfeit of the Sabian, counterfeit of the Persian religion, the fire worshippers, counterfeit of the Ethiopian old religions, counterfeit of Christianity and Judaism, counterfeit of all fairy tale stories too, including the Talmud. So. When you speak about anything, we will get you busted because all your religion is based on counterfeit stories. Either it's stolen and Muhammad changed some details, but we can find it easy in your book. And you will notice that no Muslim will call us and tell us why the Muslim cleric are lying. Zakir Naik, he says, do you know the book of Jonah? It says, okay, what, 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 uh, let, let me, let me call the Zakurani Yuka. Let's see what, uh, what he said about the book of Jonah. Where is Zakurani Yuka? Let me see the part. Are full of doubts, with only conjecture to follow. All right. Jonah alive. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has to be dead or alive? I do believe in Jesus. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, As Jonah was in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. So Jonah was dead or alive? Jonah was alive. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has to be dead or alive? So the Bible still says he was dead and he raised back to life. Where does the Bible say? I have to find it. But what I'm telling you, Gospel of... Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 38. <laughs> you know the sign of Jonah, no? Do you know? That time you were dead or alive? Alive. So when you know the sign of Jonah and you don't know where it is said he's dead, you have to follow what is in red letter. Ah. There are many things which are mentioned by Paul, which is not part of the sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you know there is something like a red letter Bible. Red letter Bible means whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said is in red ink. If you quote me something in blacking, I will not believe. Why? That is not the word of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Do you give more preference to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or St. Paul? Jesus Christ. Here you see the stupidity of the Muhammadan. You see, if we ask the Muslim, do you listen to Allah or to Prophet Muhammad, they will say the same. It's the same. If you listen to Muhammad, you are listening to Allah. Okay, Paul is the messenger of Jesus, and Jesus is God. So why we will not listen to Paul? <laughs> is Muhammad God? Hey Muhammadan, is Muhammad God? 90% of Muhammad command is against the Quran. 
which one the Muhammadan they take? They take the word of Muhammad against the word of Allah. And uh, the Quran Ayyuka, each time he speak to a Christian, he mentioned the story of Jonah. And how Jonah will prove that Jesus did not crucify? Listen carefully and die laughing. What I'm quoting to you is in red. Gospel of Matthew noted down. Gospel of Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 38. So don't get me a quotation of backing. To prove this wrong, you have to get me a quotation in reading. That's what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said. I request you to go home, read the Bible, and when you're convinced, inshallah, come. We can quote for you tons of them, you donkey. But you, you know, because you are a donkey coward, you don't, you, you know, we offer this guy long time ago. Do you dare to debate me? So what they do, they make a conference, they bring people who they have no idea what they are talking about. So Zachary Naik will look like he is smart and they don't even allow you to debate. The second you start arguing, he will start shouting at you and he will not let you continue. He knew two verses in the Bible, that's it, he knew the Bible. But he ignored all the other verses in the Bible. Isn't it Jesus said, you can destroy this temple and I will build it in three days? Is that Paul talking? How many times the Messiah said that the Son of Man have to die? Isn't it Jesus the one who said, this is my blood will be shed for you? And this is my body which is going to be broken for you? Is that Paul? Do you see why we don't respect them? Continue the Quran and Yuka. Come to the truth. Thank you. That's it? Or, or it looked like we... How can I prove that Jesus was not crucified? Sir, how can I prove that Jesus wasn't crucified? Peace be upon him. The Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, 157, they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. So Quran is clear. Wama katalu, wama salabu. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. If I have to prove to... Are you a Christian, brother? I am. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. When people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tell him that, Oh, Master, show us some signs. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Ye evil and adulterous generation, seek it thee after a sign, no sign shall be shown to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Brother, do you know the story of Jonah? Jonah, Jonah. I do. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, Almighty God tells Jonah. Guys, anyone notice here how Zachary Naik, he did expose Islam from what he caught? Just from what he caught. I want to play it again and let us see in the chat who is going to give me the correct answer. It's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. When people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tell him that, Oh, Master, show us some signs. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Ye evil and adulterous generation, seek it thee after a sign. No sign shall be shown to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the sun. Anyone knows how he just got himself busted? Anyone knows? All his argument is Jonah was alive when day he was inside the fish. Jonah was alive before he go inside the fish. 
Jonah was alive after he came from the fish. But Jesus did not say even about the word alive. Jesus said the same as Jonah was in the belly of the fish. He did not say the same as Jonah was dead in the fish. And by the way, Jonah was dead. Because we can go right now to Jonah 2. Jonah 2, it says clearly that he died. You resurrected me. I was in the belly of the fish and you resurrected me. You brought me back to life. But if we go only by what he's saying, that means the whole story in Islam is false because if Jesus is speaking about himself, the same as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, obviously Jesus will not be in the belly of the fish. He will be where? In the belly in the earth, of the earth. Now, if we ask Zechariah, do you think that those Jews and those Romans, they bury Jesus alive? Is that what the story say? So now he admitted that the Messiah was in the belly of the earth for three days, three nights. What is missing? Oh, he was not dead. <laughs> So the example he's trying to use is a stupid. It's literally stupid. The Messiah, he did not say anything about Jonah as being dead or alive. He said, the same as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, I will be in the belly of the earth. So if this is your proof that Jesus is alive, well, this is a proof that Jesus was crucified. And then if you claim that he was not dead, that would be the most stupid thing again, because a person who was crucified and he is bleeding horribly, and now he is in the grave for three days, three nights. And then he came back again. That means the Christians are right. Do you see how stupid even the logic he is trying to accomplish? And don't listen to Paul. Paul is a messenger of Jesus. He is not Jesus. So why you listen to Muhammad? He is a messenger of Allah. He is not Allah. Don't tell me Matthew said. Tell me what Jesus said. Matthew is the disciple of Jesus. He is not Jesus. Why you listen to Muhammad? So here you see the hypocrisy and the stupidity of those people. What he is using proving to us that Jesus he was in the grave. From his own mouth. If this is your evidence that the Messiah did not die, that means the Messiah was in the grave. What he was doing there? It's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. When people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tell him that, Oh, Master, show us some signs. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, Ye evil and adulterous generation, seek it thee after a sign, no sign shall be shown to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights. Guys, did he say a sign? Did the Messiah say a sign? If we ask the Quran Yuka, later he explained, he says, sign means a miracle. So how that is a miracle if we put somebody in a room for three days and three nights? <laughs> because the grave is a room. <laughs> Now, like, let, let us say you bury somebody with the dust. Let us say, but the, the, there's a space, there's enough air, he survived. What is the miracle? I cannot believe how stupid those idiots are.
And not only that, he is giving wrong numbers. Did he say what he said? Did he say 38 or 39? I did not hear him. Hold on. Three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. Show us some signs. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and tell him that, oh, master, show us some signs. So, I am. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38. When people verse number 38. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Let us go to verse number 38. Uh, 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 and uh, let us see what uh, the Quran in UK is talking about. Hmm. Maybe he's reading from the beginning. Okay, we will let it go. But the Billy, the story about the Billy of the fish, or Jonah, is after. Anyway. Then certain of the scribe and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. And obviously those people are hypocrites. This is not about Jesus don't want to do a sign, because Jesus already he resurrected people from death. He made the blind seas. He made people cannot walk, walk. The Bible confirmed that he made miracles. No books can write how many they are. But still they are asking for miracles. It's like uh, making fun, you know, or making a miracle for us. Let us see what you can do. So he said to them, you evil, filthy, like Muhammad, generation of evil. You are seeking after signs. There is no sign shall be given to you, but the signs of Jonah. For Jonah was there three days, three nights in the whale belly. Did he say Jonah was dead for three days, three nights? No. So what the similarity between the story of Jesus and the similarity of, Je of Jonah? Jonah was inside the deep dark. The Messiah was in the deep dark. So shall the Son of Man be three days, three nights? How the stupid Zakurana Yuka trying to prove that Jesus was not dead by such a story. You just to prove that Jesus was not the grave. And then you need to tell us why in the world even the Christian who took his body to bury him, they bury Jesus when he's alive. I mean, can you believe how stupid, stupid how, how low IQ they are? As long as you agree with the story, then you need to explain to the Christians why the Christian they buried Jesus in the grave. Abdul, he's alive. This is their master. This is their Lord. They will be happy to take him here. He's alive. Take him home. They did not do it. So what they do? They put him in the tomb. So the donkey, who is trying to prove that he is a smart, he proved to us that he is a donkey like he's a prophet. You know, when I was a kid, uh, I and like I, I used to read a lot actually. I, like when even when I was like you know very little, I used to walk like for forty five minutes just to go to library uh, because you know all the adults they are busy, everybody have his work, and the only way to do it I go you know wearing my short and go and walk 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 I do library. And, you know, I did read a lot of books. Books are fit for a child and books who they are not fit for a child. But I remember one statement I learned when I was a kid. I cannot forget. I love it. It was from a Chinese say. He left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. This sentence stuck in my head. I love it. Because you look around you, you see a lot of these things around you. People who lived as a donkey. This guy, he's traveled the world. He is in TV stations. And he never thought about what he's saying, how stupid it is. Jesus did not say anything about if Jonah was dead or not. He said the same as Jonah was in the, in the belly of the fish for three days. Same as the son of man. Did he say the word dead, Jonah? No. So regardless if Jonah was dead or not. What Jesus comparing is that he was in the deep dark, Jonah, and the Messiah will be in the deep dark. Jonah was for three days, three nights. 
the Messiah will be there for three days, three nights. Then as long we agree that the Messiah was in the tomb for three days and three nights, you stupid idiot, you need to tell us why he is in the grave for three days, three nights. He was doing camping. So the Roman, they crucified Jesus. The Jews are there and they took Jesus and say, oh, he's alive. Let us bury him. <laughs> I cannot find how, I mean, I cannot explain to you how stu stupidity work. Do we have any Mohammedan there to call me? May they, may they. Are we taking notes, people? Are we taking notes? Are we downloading videos? If you notice today, I deleted a lot of my videos. And you might ask me why I delete my videos. My friend YouTube is against me. YouTube is not my friend. That's why we ask you to download them. We ask you to take notes. We ask you to learn. We ask you to bookmark reference. We ask you to write down ideas we share with you. You are worried if you call me, you are going to curse me? Uh, hmm. Look how sensitive he is. This Abdul, he is worried. He is not worried that his prophet, if he see his wife, will F her. But he is worried he will curse me. He is very sensitive. He is not worried that the prophet says that Allah sent verses says a Muslim woman, she can give her breast and she can be suckering a foreign guy for 10 times in 10 different days. But he is worried about cursing. He is not worried about his neighbor coming to his house and he find the neighbor laying in his couch sucking the tits of his wife. Practicing Islam. But he is worried if he call me, he will curse me. Look how sensitive they are. He is not worried that Muhammad will come to his house and ask for his daughter, which is five years old, and he want to F her. But he is worried. If he call me, he will curse me. I mean, you curse me five times a day. Don't you say Al-Fatiha five? Please, Allah, don't make us the same as the Christians. Please, Allah, or the Jews. Please, Allah, please, don't, don't make us like, you know, what about you change your prayer and make it different? Like say, please, Allah, don't make me like, like Christian prince. I will tell you a true story, by the way. There's a guy, he made fun of me the way I look like. Do you know what happened to him? Allah punished him. He woke up in the morning. He went to the bathroom to brush his teeth. He looked at the mirror. He looked like me. He started cursing. Oh my God, what happened? No way, no, please. Allah, what you did to me? Abdul. All right. Let us see this guy. If you don't answer this time, I'm going to block you. Hello? Mute YouTube. Mostly Fakira. This is this is an act of Fakira. Hello? Because only Fakira do not know how to make Arabic names for Skype. Hello? Yeah, I told you. I know because he do not know how to write an Arabic name in Skype. So he fabricate names and the names they don't fit with Arabic. Fakira, son of Muta. And right away he said the effort. And right away he said the Quran. All right. If you are not a Muslim, don't try to call me. I somebody, his name is Brian. Why you want to call me Brian? Are you a Muslim? You are a Muslim and your name is Brian? Don't call me. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? Beside Fakira, who said the effort to his prophet, and he agreed that the Quran is corrupted, and Jibril was an angel. Uh, sorry, uh, Shaitan was an angel, and he's an angel. He's he is copying the Bible. And genies, brother, they try to steal information from Allah, and Allah he put them in jail. Do 
Do we have any Muhammadan? Real Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday. How do you do? Shame on you. You send me Fakira. There's no men left. This kid, once he opened his camera for me, and I could not believe what I saw in the wall. Honest to Allah. The wall is covered by shit. I could not believe how dirty the wall behind him. I mean, if you have a dog, his house will be 10 times more cleaner. However, that remind me of Muhammad when he do poo poo or he do masturbation. How the prophet he dry his hands on the wall. <laughs> Is that correct, Muslims? Is it true? <laughs> You're a prophet. He dry his hand on the wall. Hmm? Let us see if this is true or not. This is why I understand why this guy, his wall was so dirty. Obviously, each time he do his shit, he touched the wall. The prophet, he performed a ghosl from Janaba, which means he was having sex. He washed his private part, and then he rubbed his hands on the ground or the wall. What? You just wash your hands, supposedly you are to the so what are you doing now? Imagine what will happen to your bathroom if you don't have a tiles and each time you touch water with your hands with all the dirt on them and then you dry your hands on the wall. Just try it. But don't blame me if your wife she throw you out of the house. Those people, the followers of Muhammad, they want to teach you how to be clean. Their prophet, he hold his penis and then he touch his hand with the ground. Why? The same hands Muhammad, he used to eat with them. Ah, and I forgot. The prophet, he said a great advice when you eat don't wipe your fingers or wash them you know just wash them let somebody lick them for them for you or you lick them have you ever heard what a wisdom man imagine the Queen of England, she passed away now. She is inviting Prophet Muhammad to represent the Muslim world. And now Muhammad is on the table of the Queen of England. And he is full of etiquette. And now Muhammad, he finished eating. He have Fakira next to him in the right side. Fakira is the slave of Allah, slave of Muhammad. Muhammad, he put his fingers in the mouth of Fakira, and Fakira, she would lick it. This is your religion. And you are going after the Christian to debate them. You have a, you have a, you have a mental person. Your God is mental. What is this? And what is the excuse? Because if you lick it, there is a blessing. Especially if you lick the middle, middle finger. Hey Muslims, so now you eat the whole dish. The whole dish is empty. And now if you lick your fingers, this is the blessing is there? What about you touch the food with your finger and lick it from the beginning? So you can get the blessing from the start. 
What about you never even bite the food? Touch your finger with the food and put your fingers in your mouth. Touch the thing because the blessing. Don't you want to get the blessing? That will make it more blessing. You do not know where the blessing is coming from. Muhammad don't want to waste food. Guys, Muhammad don't want to waste food. Are you saying to me your prophet he lied? He gave a fabricated reason. You know, the Muhammadan always, they try supposedly to support their prophet, duct tape, you know, the duct tape religion. But look what they do. When they try to duct tape Muhammad, we cannot see the mouth of Muhammad. We cannot see his eyes. We cannot see even any hole of his in his body. But look what he did. Muhammad is did not like to waste food. That means Muhammad is lying because he claimed there's a blessing. There's a blessing. He did not say, you know, he can say, okay, at the same time, a potato. What waste food? It's your fingers, fingers. What is going to be in your fingers? What is going to be under your nails? What waste food? The food is in a dish. Your fingers is the food? Same time, don't you know you have nails? Don't you know that those people lived long time ago? They don't have what we have today. We can wash our hands easy. We can go to the bathroom easy. We have a, a, a soap. We have all kinds of detergent. Uh, you know, lick your fingers. Now we know why Muslims, they were dying left and right. Muhammad, he lied and he said that the city of Mecca and Medina will never be attacked by the plague. And Muhammad, he brought the plague. False prophecy. I remember uh, uh, there is a, there's an idiot. His name is uh, James White. He said the Muslim world was saved from the plague. The donkey, you do not know that the Muslim world was dead. This is why they have low population until now. What is the population of Saudi Arabia until now? Until now, what is, I mean, a country is exist for a thousand of years. They are not even 20 million, including the foreigners. Once I went to the Medina, and this is right after Muhammad died. Omar was the caliphate. This is not long time after. I went to Medina where was an outbreak of disease and the people were dying rapidly. I was sitting with Omar and the funeral passing uh, 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 like, like going by. Omar said, it has been affirmed. Paradise, paradise, what paradise? Those who are going to paradise now? But isn't it Muhammad, he says, plague and those diseases will never enter the city of Medina and Mecca because the angels of Allah are guarding it. The guy, he just died. Right away, the plague is coming. Muhammad, he claimed that if you die by the plague, it's a... It's a you are a, you are a, a mur like a, a murderer. <laughs> hmm. Look at this one. Allah Messenger reported saying that there are angels on the mountains of Rhodes and of Medina, so neither plague or the Dajjal can enter it. The guy, he just died and the plague is all over the place and people were dying left and right. And what is the excuse? And by the way, as long as this is the case, why you Muslims, you stop, uh, you know, the Hajj and etc. in Saudi Arabia and you take a vaccine. I mean, the Kaaba was totally empty. The angels is not there no more. Huh?
Why you close it? What is this? The only one is there. Actually, there's nobody. Look. The angels are guarding it. This is a place supposedly open 24 hours, 7 days a week, non-stop. As long as the Prophet, he said that Allah and his angels are guarding the city, the Medina and Mecca. Is Medina more important than Mecca? And by the way, why why the why this shape? I mean, why it's not like uh, not a circle? What the heck is this? What what they put there? Are you you were afraid that you will give uh, the disease to the Kaaba? Why you put those things there around the Kaaba? The God who his house have a skirt and his house have a, has a vagina. Do we have any Mohammedan? Anyone? Yanhar Abiyad is Zayak Yaburai. Burai Asbaha Rasulan. من المدرسة مفصولا جاهل لا يقرأ عالم لا يعلم نادم لا يندم حالم لا يحلم قارئ لا يقرأ فاهم لا يفهم حمار محمور Do we have any Muhammadan here? The only one who speak Arabic they know what I said I'm not going to translate for you it's hard it's impossible. Do we have any Mohammedan here? Any Muslim would like to call us. Let us talk about the educated the prophet who cannot understand, who cannot read. I'm with you, he's illiterate. We are people of the book. The Quran call us people of the book. The Quran never call you people of the book. There's a reason. Very simple reason. You are following illiterate prophet. You never had a book. What is your book? If you had a book, if you had a book, then the Quran should call you the people of the book. Never. Any Mohammedan? Why is it dry today? Are you guys inviting uh, Muslims? Who of you have TikTok? TikTok. Can you TikTok and talk talk? Like record what we are saying. Like I'm saying, any Muslim want to debate me? Record it in your cell phone and post it. Like few second, post it in TikTok. Let us do TikTok in together. Do you speak Egyptian Arabic? I speak all uh, languages, brother. Chinese too. You know, I want to be Chinese, honestly, because I want to fly from a tree to tree. You watch those Chinese movies and you see the girl, she jumping from a tree to tree, from roof to roof. Last time I tried to do that, I broke my leg. I never broke my leg, by the way. Just joking. But how the Chinese can do it? I want to do it. Okay, Muhammad, he... Uh, even Muhammad could not jump from the tree to the tree. He took a mule with two wings and the wings in the thigh of the donkey. I mean, he Muslims, by the way. Why the mule have the wings in his thigh? I mean, is, it, is, is there's a defect in the design? Have you ever heard of a flying animal, his wings in his ass? Why? 
Is that like a special design? Any Muhammadan? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. How that will help him to fly if his wings in his ass? And by the way, why the, even the donkey have wings if the guy is accompanied by the angel Jibreel who have 600 wings? Who's faster? The donkey with two wings in his ass or the Jibreel who have 600 wings? <clears throat> Any Abdul? And the funny thing about Muhammad's story that when Muhammad he arrived to Jerusalem, he tied the donkey in the wall. <laughs> Imagine the donkey sent by Allah from the seven galaxies behind the seven seas and the seven uh, monkey uh, Disneyland. And now Muhammad is afraid that the donkey will run away. And there is a reference actually. Let me let me see. Uh, when when uh, uh, Allah Prophet wanted to ride uh, Al Buraq, Al Buraq he start shooting with his feet like, you know, the donkey what they call it like you kick you kick you know you, you kick and he start like sweating and then Jibril he said to him shame on you do you know who's this this is Muhammad is that what you do you stubborn donkey You don't want the Prophet to ride you? I mean, can you believe it how disgusting this donkey sent by Allah? And now the Prophet want to ride the donkey who have two wings in his ass. And now this donkey don't want Muhammad to be in his back. Can you believe it? What a shameful donkey. Any Muslim can explain to us what's happening? Why the donkey you don't want Muhammad? Do you know? Any Muhammadan? Any brave Muhammadan, he dare to call us. We don't want any females from Ghana. Any Muhammadan. And look, the, the angel said to him, what the heck, what is wrong with you? And then the donkey, when he heard that this is a prophet Muhammad, the most honorable man, he was sweating. Put yourself in his shoes. You are a donkey. I'm talking to you, Muhammadan. You are a donkey. You have two wings in your ass and the prophet will ride you. And you refuse. And then you learned that this prophet Muhammad you will be sweating. You, you will do. You will make pipi. I mean, how in the world he'd do such a sin? What the heck? Mm. The flying donkey. And actually, there's a hadith. But I don't know if I can find it in the in those websites. I don't think I can find it here. It says that even Jibril himself he ride with a donkey with, with Muhammad on the donkey. <laughs> I mean, how Jibril is an angel have six hundred wings and then he ride with Muhammad on the donkey and then. When 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 the donkey he fly in the top of a mountain he lift his feet up because his feet is so long <laughs> so long 
Do you like it? And by the way, I make it so long so you can understand how long it is. Because in case you don't know what I'm talking about, you know. So long. Jibreel here, right? Let me see if I can find the reference. Maybe I can't find it. Hold on. You never know. Hold on. What is this? Oh. Yeah, I don't think it's here, but I think we can find it in a Tabari or in the book of explanation of Al Bukhari. Uh, let us see, hold on. <clears throat> okay, we found it here in the book. It's called Sharh uh, Sahih al Bukhari, volume number 17, page number 22. I will use Google Translation. Uh, let us see where he did write Muhammad. Let's see, the, the page is long. I need to find where exactly. Uh, where exactly it says that before we use Google Translation. Okay, hold on. Yeah, when I go in the page, it doesn't show. But let's see. Different uh, at Tabarani. Okay, let's see this one. All right, this one look better. All right, we found other book. It says here, Utiya bil buraq, farakabahu huwa wa jibreel sallallahu alayhi ma wa sallam. Fasara bihuma. So we brought, the, the buraq was brought for him, and the Prophet and, Jibr and Jibreel, both of them, they ride the donkey. Hadith number 9976. The book name is Al Mu'jam al Kabir, Al Tabarani, written by Al Tabarani. Verse number 10. Page number 69. Again, the hadith number is 9976. I will send you the link in the chat. You can use Google Translation. Uh, so you can laugh. I don't know why Google Translation not working. Uh, Arabic, English. Okay, translate full page. Here we go. All right. Uh, so, okay. So Al Buraq was brought, Al Buraq is the name of the donkey, and he and Jibreel, may Allah bless him, rode in it. Do you see it? <laughs> and then when he came upon the mountains, his feet rose. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. You don't want your feet to touch the mountain. Are you kidding me? You are a donkey flying high and your legs is so long what do you do scooby-doo very simple you lift up your legs the same as airplane who won the reference they said the reference and again this is from the book of Mu'jamu Tabarani, very number 10, page number 
page number 69. But anyway, I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, look, don't you see the airplane when they go up on the air, they put their wheel up? They do that, right? It make, I mean, look how Muhammad, he knew, my, 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 I mean, okay, his legs is so long. But maybe you don't understand what he's saying. Because Muhammad, he say, he claimed that the distance between his legs, because they are so long, is the same as the distance from here to the end of the horizon. This is a very long, long, long donkey, limousine. It's not just a donkey. All right. And Muhammad, he learned about this flying donkey from Aisha. Aisha, once when he entered upon her, he found Aisha playing with a, do a flying horse. He said to her, a horse have two wings. Muhammad, he said to her, he laughed. He said, what is this? She said, don't you know that this is the horse of Solomon? You know? Aisha, she learned that from the Jews from the Jewish children. Muhammad, he adopted. Suddenly, he is the one who is riding the horse. Do we have any Muhammadan? He can call us and tell us what is the proof that Muhammad, he ride such a donkey and why he is even riding a donkey. Especially if he is in the company of an angel who used to go up and down every day to meet the command to get the command from Allah and what do you mean that when he is a flying he put his legs up on the mountain I mean was Muhammad flying above the mountain or he went to heaven what mountains Gambino wanna call me who is holding Gambino? Gambino, Bambino, who cares? Just call me, don't give me a drama. I don't have a StreamYard. I'm not using StreamYard. You want to call? We have a Skype. No drama. Any Mohammedan? Ah, oh, this was on the donkey. I know your prophet he mentioned he he claimed that it was between the the mule and a donkey which means like obviously this the, the father of this donkey he's a playboy you know he slept with like you know many females from the donkey families horses so he was like he met a girl she is like half male half half do half donkey half a mule you know and then they have a donkey his name is Alborah And by the way, this is a true story. I mean, we can easy prove it to be true. Yeah. The, the <laughs> you know, Fakira make names in Arabic. I don't know what Fakira she is using. What kind of Arabic she is using when she make name in Skype? <laughs> I guess she is using a software. <laughs> Maybe he is using Google translation, like he type in his own language and then he asked Google to translate the, the name. Fakira, what you can do. Do we have any Muslim? May they. Potato. Do we have any Mohammedan? I promise you, if you call me, I have a connection. I will call Allah for you. I speak Arabic, not like you. 
you say very funny prayer in Arabic, but you do not know Arabic. I will call Allah for you and ask him to send you Al-Buraq. The funny is that Allah, if you want something to happen, he say B is going to be. But Allah cannot take Muhammad to heaven without taking him by a donkey. Okay. Must be a true story. You don't like Muhammad because he was very was successful. Yeah, I can tell he was successful. He died by poison. That is a great success. I mean, the guy, whatever he eat, he vomited for four years. Every single person in the world hate him, including his own son. Hmm? You know, according, according to your religion, my God was not crucified. So even in that point, is not bad for you. In my belief, my God, he said, I put myself down. I lay down myself. Nobody can take it. That is a success. He came. He came to bring victory over death. So even his crucifixion was a victory. No death can take him. No grave can hold him. Your prophet is in the grave. Until now. My Lord is in heaven right now. Any Mohammedan? Any brave Mohammedan? You can show off to them, you know, how I do you dirty. Okay, Gambino. Look like you are the one who lick his fingers after he eat, and then he clean his uh, anus. Don't forget to say the prayer before you enter the bathroom, because shaitan, he play with your anus. You know, if we ask the Mohammedan, how many times? You've, how many Muslims a day they don't pray before they go in the bathroom? You will find that every single Muslim don't pray. Which means every single Muslim shaitan play with their anus, as Muhammad he claimed. And I want to know how Muhammad for 40 years before he learned this, because remember, he become a prophet after the age of 40. For 40 years, Satan was playing with his anus. Do you remember the video in YouTube about the Sheikh speaking about this hadith? About the shaitan? Like you go to the bathroom, you think you will stay there for like 10 minutes, and you squeeze eh, eh, and nothing, like nothing happening because shaitan, he was inside? Uh, let us see if I can find you the video. There we go. I found the video. Just search for when Muslim pray, Satan fought and run. True story. This is an old video of mine. But you will see there the Muhammadan in the video. He explained to you how Shaitan he play with your anus. He play with your bows. Because you did not say the prayer. And here we need to ask the question: Muhammad was not a Muslim for 40 years. And he never learned this about this prayer until he became prophet. So how many times shaitan he played with his anus? 
Any Muslim can tell us. I mean, do Muhammad knew what he's saying? The guy was not a prophet for 40 years of his life. Shaitan will round around your penis. If you don't say the prayer, Shaitan will do your wife. So Muhammad, when he was having sex with Khadija, Shaitan was doing Khadija. And if Muhammad have any kids from Khadija as the Muhammad and they claim, that mean, oh, those are the kids of Shaitan. Not only that, Muhammad himself is the son of Shaitan. Why? Because the father of Muhammad was not a Muslim. The mother of Muhammad, they were not Muslims. Which mean, the father of Muhammad and the mother of Muhammad, they never pray before having sex. Therefore, the son from that sexual relationship is Satan's son. That is Muhammad. So, the question is, do even Muhammad knew what he's saying? Do you do he knew he is insulting himself? Once there was a Muslim, he kept coming to a Christian chat room in Paltok. He come to the mic, he take the mic, he say the same thing every time. Christians, you are the sons of Shaitan. You don't pray before the sexual intercourse. May Allah curse you. You know. So that man, he says to me, can you please answer him? I mean, he said, I don't know what to say to him. We, we know you can, you can, you know, you, you can give him a listen. And I was not really, I don't want to talk, but eh, I said, okay, give me the mic. So I asked him three times, as usual, the prophet, he asked three times. Are you sure that the prophet, he said this hadith and it's sahih? He took the mic, he said, yes, I'm sure. I took the mic again. You know, pal talk, you can't speak in the same time. It's not Skype. He said, are you sure that this is a correct hadith and it's not like bad? You know, he took the mic. He said, what's wrong with you? I told you, sure. You are not son of, uh, you are son of shaitan. Shaitan, you have sex with your mother. I took the mic again and asked him for the third time. Are you sure that this hadith is sahih? He took the mic. He said, you stupid donkey idiot. What's wrong with you? I told you already. It is sahih. What's wrong with you Christians? I said, okay. Took the mic. Said, as long as you are very sure after three times, based on what you said, your prophet himself is a son of shaitan because his father was not a believer. When he did boom, boom to his mother, he did not say the prayer. The mic is yours. He took the mic and he started crying. May Allah curse you. May Allah destroy you. May Allah you. you are smart like shaitan. You are, Allah will punish you. Allah will do it with you. Like, what the heck? I mean, the guy was insisting that the prophet Moli, peace be upon him, is a prophet and the hadith is sahih. The second we get him busted from his own words, he start crying. He start cursing me and crying. And then after that, he never come to the chat room ever. Do we have any Muhammadan? Mede, Mede, how do you do? Hmm. Any Muhammadan? Nobody? Hmm. Let us play this old video. You go inside the bathroom with your left foot. You go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. Right the away. dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't... It's in the hadith, remember. So if you if you enter with the, right, with the left foot and you say the prayer, you will become invisible for shaitan. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it really amazing? I will make a, a very serious comment about this after we listen to all of this again. I don't want to disturb you from listening and laughing again. Uh, I will make a comment at the end. The dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is, 
the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidi says he plays with your bowels. Brothers, we have to be serious here. Shaitan not only go inside your anus and your butt because you did not pray to Allah before you entered the bathroom. Now you are not invisible. Shaitan, he can see you. Shaitan, not only he is going to play with your anus now, not only his inside, he play with your bowels. He play, play like Shaitan, what are you doing? I'm playing with the bowels of the Muslims now. Shaitan, what are you doing? Okay, why why you have a screwdriver and you I'm screwed in them? This is and the funny is Zakir Naik he says in the old days people used to believe in superstition with Hitler. When Prophet Muhammad came, people believe in superstition. But Islam destroyed superstition. We Muslim, we don't believe in superstition. They don't believe in superstition at all. Never. <laughs> Shaitan, not only inside your anus, inside your butt. So you go inside the bathroom now and you want to do like poo poo. Huh, good luck with that. If you say the prayer, brother, you will become invisible. I want to do that. I want to go to the bank next time. Say the prayer. The security will not see me. Go to grocery store. Practice Islam. Steal. Nobody will see me. Even the camera. They will see the candy coming from the shelf by itself. They cannot see me. They can see the candy getting out. You will become invisible. Invisible. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidi says he plays with your bowels. By the way, this is proven to be scientifically accurate. In fact, if we ask Ali Dawa and Mimi Hijab to take x-ray or maybe a selfie for their anus you will see how big it is prove me wrong you know when you are a kid are you going to know this prayer do do really Ali Dawa he said the prayer before you enter the bathroom so you can tell what happened to the anus of those people And you know, we have like, how, how many Muslims in the world? Shaitan is playing with their anus. You have to enter with your left foot. If you enter with the right foot, man, Shaitan, not only he play with your anus, not only he put his screwdriver, this time is going to use electric drill. Be careful, you have to use the left foot. <laughs> Bingo, not the right foot, haram. The left foot. Do we have any Muhammadan? And they are the one who want to explain to us the Bible. They are the one who want to teach about Christianity. They are the one who teach us about about saying, brother sister, in the Quran, it's been in the theme. Where is the murder theme? It's in the Big Bang. What in the Quran? There's a Big Bang. Well, this is a Big Bang, man. Don't you see the Shaitan doing Big Bang to your anus? If there is a bigger bang than this. According to Muhammad, Shaitan, he play, he sleep in your nose, he piss in your ears, he jump in your mouth, he play with your anus, and he go around your penis when you have sex with your wife. Is there anything left? Yeah, electronic drill. Uh, by the way, I'm using electronic drill now. My, my coffee machine broke. So, you know, I, I, I drink uh, Greek coffee. I don't drink like the, you know, American coffee. It's useless for me. So I have this, uh, like a Greek coffee, uh, manual one. So I use the drill, put it on it, and that will make it electronic. But I'm looking for uh, a coffee machine, which can make a very fine, extremely fine coffee, but I cannot find them. They are very expensive. But maybe I should ask Shaitan if, he, if I can use his drill. Do we have any Mohammedan?
now you know why the Muslim leaders, like, you know, when they come to meet the Trump, you will see the crown prince, he keep moving his ass left and right. Shaitan play with their bum. I mean, he have a, he have a deep hole there. Muhammad, he have a knowledge of the unseen. Exactly, he can see what happened inside your anus. I mean, what a knowledge, man. Prophet Muhammad, for Allah, he provided him with extra vision. You go inside the bathroom. You sit in the bathroom. Prophet Muhammad, he can't see you. Your pupa is coming and you are struggling with shaitan because you did not say the prayer. Prophet Muhammad wanted to save your anus, so he gave you the advice. Before you enter the bathroom, use your left hand, uh, le foot. And you have to say a prayer in Arabic, not in English. No way. In Arabic, shaitan, nothing will affect him. It's in Arabic. If you say that in Arabic, you go inside the bathroom, you are bingo, you are invisible. Hey, Abdul, did you try to do that when you leave the house so your wife, she will not notice you are leaving because before you wash the dishes? Hmm? Why you don't say that? Isn't it the Quran? Muhammad, he says that women are shaitan. She come in the image of shaitan and she live in the image of shaitan. Just say this prayer, you become invisible. You open the door, your wife, she will not see you. You come back home, your wife, she is sitting behind the door, still she cannot see you. She will see the door open, but she will not see the husband. Just do it. Take it easy. Yeah, it's easy. Do we have any Muhammadan? See, I'm trying to do different timing so we can get more Muslims and more audience and those who live, like I say, in Indonesia, uh, Korea, uh, Vietnam. I have a lot of Vietnamese, you know, who I watch my videos uh, because I get a lot of rice donation. So I know. <laughs> uh, so we try to do different time, but you need to, uh, you know, bring uh, customers. Don't you want to see a nice, uh, you know, uh, debate? What is the customers? Unbelievable. Sure, this is a religion. This is a very good religion. This is the best religion ever in the history. And Prophet Muhammad, he is the best prophet. He prophesy everything. As an example, how Prophet Muhammad, he prophesy that... Uh, uh, the sun set in murky water. How he knew that? He never been there. How how he knew that? That is unseen. Because he never saw that. Hmm? How Muhammad he prophesied that he would die by poison? The Quran says, Muhammad said, Allah told him, if you lie and fabricate Quran, we will cut your artery. And this is exactly how Muhammad he died. <laughs> Maybe this is the only correct prophecy here. By mistake, maybe. Or maybe the Messiah, he made it happen this way so we can expose him. Is not Qathim, it is Qutham. Uh, I don't know, you, you are saying it in English. Uh, uh, The way I I read it, it is it says Qatham. Remember, all the all the books in the time of Muhammad, none of them have Tashkil. So you can just play with the Tashkil, you can make a different uh, pronunciation if you want. Qatham, Qatham, Qatham. Do as you wish. At the end of the day, the important is that Muhammad's name is not Muhammad. Uh, you heard that Sheikh warning Abdul not to call you? Okay. Well, that will not help them anyway, because at the end of the day, you know, we are laughing, we are learning. Uh, Christian people getting education, Muslims proven to be losers. Any Muhammadan here?
מדי מדי. נובדי? So look what uh, what uh, uh, Zaker Naik and Mufti Ming they proved to us today, and I hope you will share your videos, those videos with your children, even if they are like as long as they understand, they are in the age of understanding, you know, especially if the topic have nothing to do with something not good for kids. Uh, but educate your children, let them see how stupid it is. And teach them how to refute the Muslim logic, which is not logical. Use their own words to refute them. If you notice, I, I use their words to refute them. He want to prove that Jesus did not die on the cross, but he accepted that Jesus was in the grave. He's saying that Jesus, he said the same as Jonah was in the, in the, in the belly, uh, inside the belly. But Jesus did not say if Jonah was dead or not. He said the same as Jonah was in the inside the belly. He will say he will be in the ground for three days. So what he shared with Jonah is a three days and deep in the dark. He did not mention anything about Jonah is alive or dead. Same time, when the Muhammadan they caught this to prove that Jesus was not dead, they are an idiot because why Jesus was buried anyway. If he's not dead, the Roman they took Jesus from the cross and did not check him that if he's dead or not. And the Christian they took Jesus to the grave and they put him in the tomb and they did not notice that he's alive. So Muhammadan are very funny, silly, desperate, false followers of God, following the demon Muhammad fabricating ideas desperate to prove us wrong but each time they try to do that we use their own logic to prove them wrong do this guy zakura nayuka dare to speak to me for 15 minutes you know what will happen They are ignorant on the Bible. No, they are not ignorant in the Bible. They are liars. This is not about being ignorant. Don't be fooled. You know, when Zechariah he says, show me one verse Jesus said in the Bible that I am God, worship me. Do you think Zechariah did not read verses in the Bible Jesus saying I'm God? Do you think so? They are not. This is not about being ignorant. They are deceiving people. Their profession is deception. The same as their God. I mean, they don't have a guilt to say that their God, he plates someone on the cross instead of Jesus, which means their God is a deceiver. Actually, that's what the Quran says. Allah is a Makkar. If you ask a Muslim, do you trust Allah? Who is a Muslim there to say, I trust Allah? Nobody. Why? Their prophet taught them that you cannot trust Allah. Hmm. Any Abdul? Actually, even the Quran uh, says that the only one who trusts Allah is the losers. 
The only one who trusts Allah, they think they are safe from the deception of Allah, is the losers. Chapter 7, verse number 99. And look how the Muslims, they translate the word makr as the word plan. Plan? You go to the dictionary, you search for the word makr, you will see that the word makr means plot, conspiracy, uh, evil. What plan? Let us change the translator. This is Hilali and Khan. Let us see another Abdul. Uh, I can't see the name. Let us see this one. This one is who? Khattab. Ah, the guy is saying the same. Planning of Allah. Maududi, Dudi Dudi, the design of Allah, <laughs> the one who feels secure from the design of, and the funny by the way they are saying the one who feels secure, <laughs> so can you feel secure from Allah, which means if you are a Muslim, you are the one who don't feel secure from Allah. The one who feels secure from Allah is the loser. You cannot feel secure with Allah. This is their stupid translation. Muhammad Asad. Let us see what this guy, this is the jewel he will bring to us. Can they then feel, ever feel secure from Allah? God deep devising, devising. But none feel secure from God deep division. <laughs> Save who is lost. <laughs> uh, big time. Look like all of them they are copying from each other. Nobody have a translation. They are just copying. What a business. Ah, look at this. Secure from Allah's scheme. Oof, that's that this guy he made a change. He opened Google and he searched like, okay, let us use a scheme here. Ah, none demeth himself secure from Allah's scheme. Save folk who they are baris. That's deep. So can you feel secure with Allah? No. A true believer is the last one who can feel secure with Allah. Islam does not provide you security. Devising. There's a hadith, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. That will find it maybe in the books of Tafsir. Yeah. Hmm. Let us see if we can find something else. Until now, zero Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a hadith. Let me, uh, let me try to remember it. This one is even more clear, showing you how stupid Islam is, and anyone who trusts the God of Islam and he accept to be a Muslim. Read with me carefully. And this is a very authentic hadith.
Uh, let me find other uh, reference. As you see, this is exists in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, very authentic. So Allah Apostle said, the deed of any of you will not save him from hellfire. Uh, you know, if you if you take this one alone and you study it carefully, you will find that this is alone will destroy all what Islam teach, because the Quran says those who do good deed and etc. Uh, you know, they have nothing to fear. They were, there's gardens for them. But look what Muhammad said. The deed of any one of you will not save him from the hellfire. Okay. We are listening. They said, even you, O messenger of Allah, he said, even I, I will not be saved. Unless an angel bestows his mercy on me. So all the promise of Muhammad was false. Your deed mean nothing. And this is the Muslim translation, by the way, which is far away from the Arabic. Not even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, not even me. He replied, unless Allah cover me with his mercy. And then Muhammad now, he is trying to cover his poopoo. He said, okay, but act correctly, okay, act correctly. And worship in the morning and in the evening. So, if because a prayer is a good deed. You know what I mean? So why you're asking them to pray if their deed will not save them anyway? Unless you got lucky. And not only to forget that uh, Muslim they be believe uh, in, in the destiny. So even when you pray, Allah, he destiny for you to pray. If you don't pray, Allah destiny for you not to pray. Everything in Islam is destiny. So what the point? What the point of all this garbage? Even Muhammad, he cannot, and he is not sure from salvation, unless he got lucky, and his God, he around him with his mercy. And as you see, this is a, a very authentic, this is Al-Bukhari, this is Sahih Muslim. We will not find this with the Messiah. The Messiah right now in heaven, he do not need the mercy of anyone to be in heaven. And that made me trust who is the Messiah. I cannot trust Muhammad himself. He cannot. He, he is not even guaranteed he will be in heaven. Unless, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, not even I, here Muhammad maybe was taking hashish and he was struggling with some moment of a truth. Because this guy is always proud about his penis. Suddenly now he's very humble. What happened? Even him, he will not go to heaven. Any Muhammadan? Christian Prince, I am a Catholic, but is that the best sect to be? Uh, Noel, you're a Catholic or you're an idiot? Like somebody told you this is our topic, it's about Catholic. Are you a Muslim trying to change our topic? Who cares if you're a Catholic or not? Christianity have nothing to do with Protestant or Orthodox or Catholic, a Catholic names. It's about Jesus. So it doesn't matter what church you go to. What is that? Are you, are you a kid? Say, are you six years old? Are you seven years old? 
Yeah, I'm a Catholic. Okay, is that okay? If you're a Catholic? And no, no, it's not okay. No, no, it's not okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what people Muslims they think they can divide us by talking about different topic. Who cares if you're a Catholic or a person or God? All those names, they're just in schools of thoughts. But God is one, so is Jesus. God is good, so is Jesus. Whoever believe in me and I will live, the Messiah said. Not whoever is a Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. Only foolish ones, they act foolishly. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he said that hadith, the Muslim, they will say, is da'if, it's da'if, da'if, da'if. The amaru makl Allah. You know, the Quran says, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. Isn't it this is enough to prove to us that Allah is the devil? How many times you hear Muslims saying, you spread hatred. You are teaching hatred. It's okay. Is, is hatred is bad? I'm not teaching it. How I'm teaching it? If I teach hatred, show me how I'm doing that. Hatred. Okay. Is hatred is from God or it's hatred is bad? According to the Quran, Allah Himself He supplied the Christians with hatred. Enter the day of judgment. And the purpose of that, because Allah, he wants the Christians to be evil people. For he is Satan. So do you see the difference between the Messiah and Allah? The Messiah, he says, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So let us say the Christians are not healthy. Okay. Shouldn't Allah save them? Teach them? No. Allah will make you more sick if you are sick. For he is Satan. He is an evil doer. Can you review the debate with Daniel Hitchcock? My friend, I don't find those debates are debate. I, I don't know the. Uh, but I mean, did, did you ask yourself about this guy Daniel? He want to debate everybody except me. I mean, who care about this guy? What he say? Who is, no, who is this guy? Nobody. <laughs> Why even you debate him? Let, let him call me. He's just a kid. He's just a stupid kid. Is he a sheikh? Is he like a guy who have like a... Uh, he is a leader of uh, the nation of... Uh, uh, he's a big imam. He's, who is this guy? He's just a guy who convert. He make a channel in YouTube. And he, you know, he have a big mouth. Do even he have a high school in Islam? You see... When, when I say Muslims call me, and if we can call it a debate, I'm not debating, I spank them. None of them is a qualified to debate, including Zakir Naik. What is the education of Zakir Naik for Islam? Nothing. So, those are a bunch of rubbish. And when you are rubbish, you say whatever you want. Because who care? Mimi Hijab. Okay, what, what is the education of Mimi Hijab about Islam? What is his degrees? He have a website, he says he's a philosopher, but isn't it philosophy against a philosopher? Why, you have a bachelor degree, you became a philosopher? Uh, no, my friend, this guy, he is not, he did not ruin Islam. Islam is ruined long time ago. They are just a bunch of kids. When you are a kid, even the Muslim will not get hurt by what he's saying. Because this is this is Islam. How he ruined Islam? The Prophet he asked for a child. She is an infant to marry her. He wished to marry her. So how he ruined Islam? You see, you uh, people, you you think that when a Muslim he is little bit being honest, he ruined Islam. You are mistaken. The Muslim they knew this. The benefit of such a person saying what he say is you Christian hear it. But all every Muslim he knew. 
This is not something he he's make, not making things up. Muslims believe in having sex with children. Uh, but you will notice that you know all of those are just nobody. You know, when you are nobody, you can say whatever you want. Like, what is the authority they have? They don't have authority. Like this guy, uh, Uthman, he called himself Sheikh. He can't even read the Quran. He can't even read his book. You see, if I'm reading the Bible in uh, English, I will have difficulty because English is not my first language. Very simple. But in Islam, you cannot be a sheikh without knowing Arabic. So, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, they call him sheikh. How he is a sheikh, but the guy, he is not a single Arabic word. Islam is not like Christianity, and not only that, actually. In Christianity, like you might find now somebody, he called himself a priest. Uh, some churches, you do not need to study uh, Hebrew and Greek, etc. But in, in the major churches like Orthodox or Catholic, you have to learn languages. Like the Greek Orthodox, you have to speak a Greek and you have to learn Hebrew. Otherwise, you will not be even considered to be a priest. It's not just like, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, you wear a uniform and you have to study bachelor, master, PhD, languages. Uh, uh, then uh, you, 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 you learn about the, the uh, like uh, word by word what they mean in details, not just the language I can speak. Uh, then you, you study liturgy. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of a study. A Muslim, a guy, he don't even know anything. He grab his uh, pesticle when he is praying. You will see him. He grab the jalabiyah. He hold his his penis, and now he claim to be a sheikh because he have a beard. Even the Muslim, they make fun of those Muslims. I mean, have you ever seen a Muslim is not making fun of Muslims who they are speaking about Islam? Let us see. Oh boy. Those are Muslims' videos. The guy cannot recite the Quran. He cannot read the Quran. One hundred Arabic mistakes they just recorded for him. This is the Muslim video, not my video. One hundred Arabic mistakes, and they call him miskeen, which means stupid. Forty-minute video, but he called himself a sheikh. You solve it. Sheikh Uthman is reading Arabic now. He said, What does he say? He says, <laughs> I feel better about my English now. <laughs> and not only that, he add words is not even there. 
you know, he add words to the Quran. They are not even in the Quran. So those are the Muslims. They are recording his videos and they come like, you know, they just got some of the stupid things he's saying. He grew a beard. He make a lot of money from YouTube. They invite him to a conference. He called himself a sheikh. To get more popular, he claimed that somebody attacked him in the parking spot and he put some ketchup on the, on the, you know, we got you in video. Where is the video? Pause the video. We got you in video, okay? We got you in video. We will find you. Where is the video? He did not make a police report. The guys station have no idea about what's what. Uh, they never saw anything. No, even security cameras. You know, every Gaza station, especially in California, have, have many cameras. They are required by the insurance companies. It's a must. It's not up to the Gaza station to have you know, security camera or not. So, you know, you know, and, and this guy, he, he called me Christian princess. Mention <laughs> that many great works have been put together like uh, Sunan al-Kabir for al-Bayhaqi. Does that mean <laughs> that I'm calling people towards al-Bayhaqi? <laughs> if I... <laughs> anyway, oh boy. So guys, it's very dry night. No customers. What I would do? Huh? No customers. What I would do? Let us see this guy. He takes me a long time ago. Is he a Muslim? See what happened when you are trying to find a customer. No customers. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What I gonna do? Catch up, come to you, bad boys. Yeah. Zakir Naik do not know Arabic. Dida do not know Arabic. Ali Dawa do not know Arabic. Uh, this potato do not know Arabic. I mean, oh, so how in the world those people they can understand? And not only that, what make it more funny, the Quran itself says, we never send the messenger to people, to his people, except in their own language. So they might understand. So the Quran work against the Quran. If Allah never send the messenger, to any people, unless he is from the people, speaking the tongue of the people. And what is the reason, the logic? So they might understand. Okay, sound good. So how Zakar Naik, he can understand? Are you saying that the Quran is wrong? If you say to me, we understand based on the Arab understanding, based on the Arab understanding. That means Allah is wrong still. Because don't Allah he knew there is people can translate. Don't Allah knew that the Arab will explain. And how Muhammad will be your messenger anyway? Because you, he have to be from the people. In Arabic it says, بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ in the tongue of his people, his people. You see, even in the stupid translation, he says, except with the language of his people. So they have to be his people. This is a condition. It have to be in the message in the language of his people. So if the Muslims are the people of Muhammad and they are from Pakistan, Somalia, etc., how that can work? That means the Quran should be sent in all languages, not in Arabic. And the Quran confirmed many times in, in the Quran that this is a clear and this is a very pure Arabic book, which is absolutely false because there is tons of hundreds, if not the whole Quran actually is not Arabic. 
You will see the Quran keep saying, "Inna anzalnahu Quran an Arabiya." Chapter twelve, verse number two. Chapter thirteen, verse number thirty-seven. The chapter sixteen, verse number one or three, which I find very funny. You know, uh, like he's saying, uh, you know, and if you read actually this story, uh, the Arab they accuse Muhammad that he is learning about religion from two Assyrian slaves from Iraq. And even the books of Tafsir mention their names. So Muhammad wanted to refute them, saying, Well, what they say, they have a broken eye, you know, Arabic, they are not Arab. But this is a clear Arabic speech. <laughs> so here how stupid the answer of Muhammad. If you speak to me now, in a in a in a not a clear uh, like, let's say you are speaking to me you are Sheikh Uthman You're speaking to me with a broken Arabic can't I say what you said in a clear Arabic because I'm an Arab do you see the stupidity so he's trying to say to them I'm not learning from them no you are learning And what make it more funny and stupid that this is a clear Arabic yet every Muslim have different explanation and interpretation for the Quran. Like we just showed you as an example how Sheikh Umran he say the Messiah was not uh, you know uh, it's not somebody was on the cross somebody else this is haram and justice. Zakir Naik say the opposite. Every one of them, he give you a different answer. Very clear Arabic. Any Muhammadan? And you know, the Quran is so clear Arabic, and the same Quran says, this is a book no one understands save Allah. <laughs> because Muhammad is a thief like you know I, I, I wrote four books until now and then you ask me explain to me this and then I say to you nobody say nobody understand what I said in my book save Allah <laughs> how that work for you Muhammad is a thief he is stealing what Waraqa ibn Nawfal he wrote. Some of the Quran is made by him, but most of the important things in the Quran is made by Waraqa ibn Nawfal. So Muhammad want to cover his ass. So he said, this book have a clear verses, clear chapters, but there is a lot, nobody knows what they mean save Allah. And those who they are grounded in knowledge, they say we believe. So what make you a scholar of Islam is to say we believe. Nobody knows the meaning of those verses save Allah. The Quran says that, not me. So the Quran is two part. Actually, there's one more, more part. Like, I don't know if you're, if you're, like I don't like to speak about those things because it might be too much uh, for an average person. But the Muslims, they have many sects. They believe in what is called the outside meaning and the inside meaning. And that is extremely dangerous. Because now everyone, he make his own meaning. As he wish. as you wish but there is a reason for Muhammad saying that because Muhammad himself cannot explain the Quran so go play with it as you wish there's inside meaning and outside meaning
any Muhammad in, from the inside meaning religion? Hmm? <clears throat> this is why if you sit between the Sunni and the Shia, the same word, the same verse, the same I mean the Shia not only one sect, there's hundreds and maybe thousands of sects, the same as the Sunni. Each one of them he have his own interpretation for the Quran. Any Muhammadan, may they, may they. Nobody. <laughs> oh boy. No luck today. Uh, <clears throat> let us see how the Muslim translate this word actually. Renounce outward sins, insert or indeed a commit sin or repair. I'm just trying to find how they translate the word botan. Uh, even Allah Himself is a zahir wal botan. You see? A zahir and al botan. A zahir is the manifest, which means the one appear, and the botan, which is the inner, inside. But all of us, we knew that Allah never appeared to anyone. So how is a manifest? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Abdul? Nobody. Yeah, 1,000 and not even a single Abdul. Well, our luck, what we can do, I say, I mean, the only Abdul he call us is Fakira. You see how lucky you are. If said Prophet, he go live, the Muslim want to call. I mean, they call it, I mean, everybody get, uh, nobody want to call me, especially from those who claim to have a knowledge. The funny is, there is a Muslim in Skype, he says to me, are you kidding me? Is that your level? You are, you are calling me? I do not know. Call the one who knows. So why are you texting me? We stay here, keep saying who is a Muslim, and the Muslim, we ask them to call the Sheikh, and then when you call them, they text you in Skype, you call them back, he cry and he say, why are you are calling me? Let us see this guy. There's a guy, he texted me. I will see if he will answer. <clears throat> if you want us to stay longer, get me some customers. Otherwise, I need to find a popcorn in my own way.
Okay, well, he's not answering. He is not answering. Any Mohammedan? Mayday, mayday. We are Islam. What is your uh, uh, full, your fertile faith ground on? On the snot. We have a lot of snot on the wall of the Kaaba. I mean, that alone is enough to prove to you that Allah is God and Muhammad is a prophet. You know, the Messiah, just because they were selling and buying, not even in the square of the temple. You see, if you go right now and search how the temple was built, you will find that there's many squares and there's the outside square where people were buying and selling. What the Messiah did, he flipped the table on them. He says, you made the house of my father a bazaar this is the messiah who is very loving very merciful he could not take it he flipped their table on them those people are trying to make living still he could not take it muhammad dogs enter the house of allah get in and get out and piss in the house of Allah and Muhammad never and neither the Muslim they sprinkle water to clean it the reference in the front of you and this is Sahir Bukhari do you think a person who really believe in God whoever that God even if he's Satan he will let a dog Piss in the house of his God and he is so lazy as him and the rest of the believers to the point nobody want to clean behind him can you believe it and what make it more funny the Muslim they say that if a dog he lick you he is so dirty now the dog is not licking you the dog is pissing on you And this is a very authentic hadith, which means it's 100% true. And what make it more funny, they never used to sprinkle water on it. The Muslims, when they pray, they put their head on the floor. Who was pissing there? The dog. Not only one dog, dogs use. Look at the word, you guys, do you see the word used? I, I want to teach you something, how I read. I don't read like others. I focus in what in, in even letters used it's not like one time a dog get in and he pissed dogs used to urinate and pass it through them so it's very normal to see dogs going inside the house of Allah pissing in the middle of the mosque or maybe in the feet of the Muslims. You know, dogs, they like to have something to stand on. He left his leg up, the column of the mosque, the stand of the mosque. I mean, poor dog, where he will go? If there's any place better than the mosque of Allah, me, myself, actually, I did piss in many, many times in the mosque of Allah. In the Middle East, there is no public twilight seat, twilight, twilight, uh, twilight uh, bathroom, you know, correct? Where you go? You go to the mosque. There's mosque in every corner. The mosque is empty. The restroom is full. Everybody in the bazaar, in the market, is in the bathroom. You want to piss? You go to the mosque. The dog, he said to himself, Oh, oh, I found a place. Let us go there. Join the club. Am I lying, Muslims? It's in the front of you. And you know what make it more funny is the details. Do you see it says that during the lifetime of Allah Messenger? You see, I'm trying to, to make you, uh, to teach you how to focus in the, in, the, in the text. During the lifetime, I love the word lifetime. So the lifetime of Muhammad was the most 
PC dogs, PC in the in the mosque, brother. All the life of Muhammad, dogs piss in the mosque. And Muhammad, neither the Muslims, during the lifetime of Muhammad, never used to sprinkle. So what happened? Like, do you do it after the death of Muhammad? Do you clean now? If this is how the mosque was during the lifetime of Muhammad, how the mosque looked like after Muhammad died? Maybe the dogs were attracted to Muhammad's smell. This is why a lot of Muslims, they try to avoid the yellow pages of Muhammad. So you will find many Muslims, they say, oh, we don't accept those, uh, we don't accept the books of Hadith. Why they don't, why they say we don't accept it? Because it's an embarrassment. Those books are exist for the last 1400 years there. Those are stories. Now they don't want to accept them. To avoid the embarrassment. And the simpler question you need to ask yourself, if Muhammad have a little jealousy for his God, little jealousy, how he allowed dogs to do that. Not only that, there's a story about a Bedouin man, he go inside the mosque, he unzip, he grab his penis, and he starts sprinkling in the pen in, in the mosque. The Muslim they said to him, "Stop!" The Prophet said to them, "Let them let him finish. Let him finish." And the Muslim they say, "See how nice the Prophet was." The reason he did not stop him because he was afraid from the Bedouin man. He is from a strong tribe. He's a coward, Muhammad. The guy he get inside the mosque in purpose to insult, obviously. Because there's no way. I mean, you piss everywhere. It's a desert. It's an empty desert. Why the guy will go inside the mosque during the time Muhammad and his companion they are praying? And why Muhammad told them, let him finish it. Any Muslim? So it looked like the house of Allah was a pissing location. Let me try to find. And the funny, by the way, there is books they claim that there is a benefit of this story. There is a benefit. Uh, let me see. It should be existing this website because this is in Bukhari. A Bedouin urinated in the mosque. Some of the persons stood up to, to stop him. Okay? But the Messenger of Allah said, leave him alone. Don't interrupt him. <laughs> then when the narrator said when he finished, he called for a bucket of water and pour it over it. This is Muhammad. He did not even talk to the guy. He did not even ask him why you do that. Don't interrupt him. You are praying in the house of Allah and the Prophet himself is in the house of Allah. The companion who they claim to be brave, Muhammad, he claim, Muslim, they claim, Abu Bakr is, uh, Ali, Ali is a warrior. Where is the warriors?
Don't interrupt him. So you can imagine this guy is like holding his penis and thinking. Hey, Muhammad, don't look. Hello? Show respect, man. Don't you see what I'm doing? I mean, even Joe Biden will not do that. Any Abdul? Mayday, mayday, how do you do? Can I go to your mosque to piss with you? Prophet Muhammad? Don't interrupt him. Why you do that? And the Muhammad and they say there is a, a great benefit from this story. Look, what is the benefit? Hmm? Hmm. All right. I guess we have enough for today. I leave you with the the Bedouin. He just gave a blessing to the mosque of Allah. Uh, and obviously the Bedouin, they used to respect Muhammad a lot. You can tell. And Muhammad was a very clean person. You can tell. And dogs themselves, they love to go to the house of Allah. This is telling you that even dogs, they believe in Allah at that time. To the point they go and donate their piss inside the mosque. I mean, the dog, he said to himself, I'm not going to fertilize anywhere. I will go to the house of Allah. I piss there, and a palm tree will grow. Right? But I wonder what kind of dog it was, this dog. Do you think it was a holy dog, maybe? Chihuahua? Hmm. Not sure. We need to make a study about it. But there is no way I guarantee you that this is a black dog. A black dog is the devil. Prophet, he ordered to kill them all. No way, black dog. And Zakir Naik, he says, In the old brother and sister, people, do you to be believing in superstition? In the old days, people used to believe in superstition. When all the religion of Islam is based on superstition. Every single teaching in the Quran, in the Hadith, is based on superstition. I mean, Zakir Naik himself is the superstition itself. If you don't believe me, look at his teeth when he talk. Don't remind me of hot dog, please. First time I came to America, like this is the first week I was in the state. I went to a church. And I met with nice people, very nice people. And there's a guy, he want to be so friendly to me. So after the church, he said, do you want to go and we eat together? I said, sure. Are you angry? I said, yeah. And then we went downtown. And then the guy, he said, let us eat hot dogs. I was like, oh, no. Oh, boy. So what do you want to eat? He said, hot dogs. It's very tasty. I was looking at him, what the crazy guy. He want to feed me dogs. You know, I said, you know what? I'm going to go home. I just, I, it's, I, I don't want to eat really. He said, no, no you, you told me you are hungry. I said, yeah, but you know, it's okay. Like, you know, uh, you know I, I don't know what to say to him. I, 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 like uh, five minutes ago, I told him I'm, I'm hungry. Yeah, let us eat. And now the guy is saying to me, he want to eat hot dogs. And I was saying to myself, what's wrong with those people, American the dogs? I mean, what about hot chicken? What about hot birds? What about hot beef? From all the, the dog? And I said, okay, you know what? You know, you know, and then the guy did not understand really. Uh, but he, you know, he was nice. He said, okay, I'm not, if you don't feel comfortable, it's okay. You know? And he said, uh, I will pay. I said, no, no, it's okay. It's not about, you know, I, I need to go. And then long after he said to me, he, by the way, like, you know, when in the other day, 
uh, when I asked you to go and eat, what happened? I told him, uh, I know what to tell you. <laughs> anyway, it was funny. But for me, I thought it's really, they, they, he's going to feed me dogs. I never heard of uh, I never heard of hot dogs before, you know. It's not like today, like there's internet and everybody knows. And, you know, like in the Middle East now, you have a McDonald's, you have all kind of food. And all this, whenever hot, uh, I know in English, hot, and I know what dogs mean. And the guy just said to me, let us eat hot dogs. And I was like, what? How lucky I am, you know, hot dogs. Anyway, I was like Prophet Muhammad, who is illiterate. <laughs> the Arabian guy in America, you know, they want to feed him hot dog and they go to the house. You know, you know? Yeah, so you have to be careful with what you eat in America. Those Americans, they eat crazy stuff. Uh, you choose Muhammad over your idol, so your prophet, your Muhammad, has become your idol. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, you know the Muslims. I don't know. Are you are you a troll or you are just making poo poo in purpose? Are you a fake Muslim or are you Muslim? Look what you just said. I choose Muhammad over your idol. That means Muhammad is your idol. <laughs> I hope you don't mean the American idol. Because I'm not sure in the pervert TV of those liberals, maybe they will bring your prophet so he can tell them how he used to have sex with all his wives without washing in one night. One night. In one night, guys, the guy is going from a woman to a woman. Now, uh, I mean, I'm not going to tell you if the story cannot be even accepted. I mean, have you ever heard of a man can have sex with 13 women in one night. Night, not day, not the whole day. And not only that, he do it without washing. He wash at the end. So you can imagine how many sexual diseases is there. All the wives. Finish the first one. He go to the second one. Second one, take off your panty. Al takbir, Allahu Akbar. Let's pray together to Allah before we have intercourse. Be dawa. Now, for sure, this is a fake story. I mean, Muhammad himself, he says he was the most weak person between all mankind in intercourse. And then he invoked his God, and his God, he sent him a dish of shish kebab. He ate it, he got the power of 40. And what is killing me about the story of the 40 men of power and sex, how Muhammad, he measured his penis power you know, like you buy a machine, they say to you, two horse, five horse, a hundred horse. How Muhammad, he measured that his penis have the power of 40 men. Did the Muslims, like they brought 40 men and they measure how many times they can do it. And then they come to the conclusion that Muhammad, he have the power of 40 men. Why he stuck with number 40? And Muhammad in the heaven of Allah will have the power of 4,000 men. I don't know if I can explain to you that, but most of you are not uh, in the age to explain to you. Any of you is here is over the age of, uh, are you mature over the age of seven? You have to be mature in Islam to be over the age of seven or six, like Aisha. So every Muslim in heaven he will have the power of 100 men for sex. Bingo. Wonderful. Muhammad in heaven, he will have the power of 40 men of people of heaven in sex. Bingo. That means Muhammad will have the power of 4,000 men in sex. Isn't this beautiful? Think about it. The guy, his penis never stopped working. 4,000 men. Muhammad, he grabbed it and he started shooting. Oh, Prophet, I'm Ali Dawa. 
I didn't, this is not, I didn't think, oh, sorry, I thought you are a female because you have a voice of a female. Okay, move around. 4,000 men in heaven because he's blessed by Allah. He's an American idol. This is exactly what happened with American uh, actors in the movie. I mean, the gun never get empty. Watch an American movie, the guy never get, and if he injured, like, like Sylvester Stallone, he was injured in the right shoulder in one scene. The second scene, it was the, the right, the left shoulder. They forgot to switch the t-shirt. Muhammad penis is the same as an American movie or Indian movie. If you like Indian movies, I know many of you like Indian movies, don't you? I mean, it's the most entertaining movies ever. Drama, crying and dancing, crying and dancing, crying and dancing. American movie. Violence, shooting, killing, chopping head, very nice, chop his head, horror, nails, chop his head, terrorist, uh, you know, I mean, very nice, unbelievable, uh, and, you know, like, all movies in the world, they are really educating your kids to be how to be a good kid, starting from the movie of Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know. Maybe I should make just a special video about movies, about every country, because every country have something hilarious about their, uh, let's say, entertainment. Like, you know, Mexican, they are crying. Iraqi, oh boy, Iraqi, they love to cry. Their song is sad. Even when they, are, they have a wedding party, they are crying. Funeral, they are crying. They pass the test, they are crying. They fail. They are crying. They enjoy it and they love it. You know, okay, welcome to Iraq. You go to Egypt. In Egypt, hit in the drum with your fingers. Everybody is dancing. Two seconds. Just take you two seconds. We'll make the whole bus dance. Two seconds. You know? I, I don't want to continue. I mean, I, the whole... <laughs> but but I found that the, the, the movies, uh, the movies in this story, speak of the culture of every nation how every nation present something unique about them you know how they try to use like you know if you are coming from a nation which is very emotional they play with your emotion so the whole country is at home watching cassandra 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 is sick the whole country is sad. Cassandra is laughing. The whole country is happy. They change the vote for the president because of Cassandra. It's the last, the last series, the last day of Cassandra. He cannot do that to us. <laughs> they delay the election for the sake of Cassandra. <laughs> And you know, Cassandra is a Mexican girl. She is so beautiful. And those Arab, they are looking at their wives. Oh boy, look at my wife. Look at her and look at my wife. Why, why this is happening to me? I mean, look at this. Uh, and then everybody start calling his, his daughter Cassandra. But Cassandra and TV have nothing to do with Cassandra in the front of me. Oh boy. Anyway. <laughs> But you know, the American movies are the most stupid, hilarious. I mean, when American they make movies, it's 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 not only it is a brain abuse. Honestly, I find it the most stupid ever. The movie does not make sense in any way, in any mean. The logic does not. There's no logic. But you know, in this world today, I mean, who cares for logic? You know, just be a spider man. <laughs> You know, it looked like that our conferred zone is to be stupid. You know what I mean? It is it is really a pressure in our brain to think or to be smart or to question. So just take it as it is. Oh boy. Um You have Sandra, not Cassandra. No, Cassandra, this is a... I think it was a Mexican movie. I'm not sure really. Mexican? I think Mexican. 
it, it caused a big problem in the Middle East. Big, big problem. A lot of divorce happened uh, because of Cassandra. Uh, people get killed, you know. Uh, a lot of theft. Because what people uh, even they do, like, you know, you invite your friends and the friend of your friend to come to your house so you can watch Cassandra, like a group watching. Then the thieves would know that the whole city is dead. The police even busy watching Cassandra. Nobody is there. You can go to the house of the guy, take his furniture. Even the neighbors, they hear the noise, nobody care. Everybody watching Cassandra. Yeah, yeah, she was a gypsy in the circus. You are right, you are right, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, Alfred, he was... <laughs> Alfred was watching Cassandra with me. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, he says, tell us more about Jesus and his love to us, for us. You are really good at it. Yeah, but maybe today I should not tell you about Jesus loving you. Maybe I should tell you about Jesus is unhappy with you and he might send you to hell. Because, you know, we Christians, we always remember and we want to remember only one side of God. That God, He sent His only begotten Son to save us. For God, He loved the world, He sent His Son to save us. But you need to remember, my friend, in order to be aware and smart, that the same God who loves us is the same God who will send you to hell if you are not with Him. So put that in your mind and remember that. When the Lord come back in the second time, he will not be the same as the first time. He will be the judge over the flesh. And the gate will be wide and open and hundreds and hundreds of millions will go to hell. So you need to remember that. It's not God just he loves you. God can send you to hell. So you need to be careful about how to view God and why you choose to be with Him. Remember, one side is not a true story. There's other side. The other side is that He loves you, He forgives you, He gives you time, so you can live and repent and try your best to be good. But then time will come and your time is up. He give you all the time you want. When your time is up, God will be your judge. Uh... <clears throat> All right, we have any other question beside the Mexican movies and Egyptian drama and American action? You know, I don't, I stop watching movies because I all oh, what I need to do open TV, watch the news, Joe Biden making all the actions. Joe Biden fell from the stairs, Joe Biden forgot his name. Joe Biden, he forgot to shake hands with the the, Kore the Korean president. He like he turned his back. He's leaving home. <laughs> hey, Joe, where are you going? The president is here. <laughs> I mean, imagine you have a you have a guest. You forget that he is there. You go home. I'm going. Okay, well, I'm going. I'm leaving. Where are you going, man? The president is still here. <laughs> they gave him a paper, telling him. The names of the people who they are around with pictures. So this is the wife. There's a picture for her, you know. Don't forget, this is how the wife looked like. <laughs> oh boy. I want to be a president. I'm I I think I can do um which Bible translation I should use. King, version, King James Version. You see, 
if you ask me, if you have time, if you want to be educated, the best is to learn the language so you can avoid the translation. However, translation at the end of the day is a translation. King James Version is a good translation. However, it's not perfect. I think the Aramaic, the Peshitta translation is way better. Aramaic English Bible. You have to check, you have to study them uh, because at the end of the day, translation is translation. Right? And there is a good way actually uh, to study a verse in the Bible. There is a, I think the website is called Bible Hub. There is many websites. They show you the original language, word by word, letter by letter, and the meaning. So if you want to do like a deep study, you can check between the translation and what the original language word mean to be sure it's very accurate. All right. Uh, the Aramaic Bible. Let me say. Let me send you a link. Hold on. Let me find it. <coughs> um, where is the Aramaic Bible? All right. I'm just searching for you. Give me a second. I'm searching, it shows me books. Uh, where is the website? You know, when you want it, you don't find it. Very strange. Um, <clears throat> let us see. I think it exists in Bible Hub, as I remember. We will go find it. something wrong with my internet is slow all right this is the link okay i don't know if it's going to open for you uh, in the correct way but we will try let me know if you can see it did it work Do we have a success? All right. Yeah, it's a, you know, I compare, but, you know, and the good thing about it, because it's based on Aramaic, so it's more, let's say, have way more accuracy uh, with the meaning uh, from other books or translation. All right. Any more things? Can you share the link for our Father out of heaven prayer? 
All right, give me a second. <clears throat> Where is the video? You know, my stupid keyboard, I switched to Arabic, it's switching to English. I switched to English, switch to Arabic. Something wrong with it. Where is the video? Where is the video? Where is the video? Oh boy. Here we go. Finally, we found it. All right. <clears throat> Now this is the our father art in heaven in the original language. Um, actually, let us play it so we can hear something nice before we go. Shall we? Thank 
I mean to that. Uh, this is in the old Aramaic, you know, and the Syriac church, until now they speak it, actually they pray in it. Uh, they don't use any other language. They speak only, they pray only in Aramaic. Uh, it's a beautiful language. Uh, and, you know, when Islam occupied the Middle East, they tried to kill it, to destroy it. However, this was the most popular language in the world. You know, the Aramaic people, they are very super smart, intelligent people. And their uh, culture and their effect is exist in the whole world. Like when you say Amin, you are speaking Aramaic. There's many, many, many words you use today. Even the word Europe, Africa is Aramaic, uh, Aramaic words. Uh, the word Arab is Aramaic word. So Aramaic is a very, uh, very extremely important language and is connected to, you know, many, many nations. Their influence was a huge. Even they are famous to be one of the first people who know how to write, how to read alphabet, the first people who build uh, ships, uh, uh, they have a lot of, uh, even their influence in, in Rome was a huge, to the point there's many Roman imp emperor was from the Aramaic people. Uh, but when Islam came, as usual, the Trojan horse worked so hard in making everything Arabic, for this is Arab religion, Arabic should be superior, and they worked there so hard to destroy it in the Middle East. And they were successful, big deal. However, still, thanks God, there's millions of people still speaking the language. And I hope more and more schools and universities will teach the language so we can protect it from being uh, killed by Muhammad. Uh, and actually, I believe even the Quran itself is nothing but a collection from Aramaic, you know, uh, if I don't know the one who speak Arabic, he can notice how close it is the Arabic language to the Aramaic. Uh, but for sure, the Arabic is coming. Arabic is a collection of languages, but a huge part of it is from the Aramaic. <clears throat> yeah, this is what Islam is about. You know, Islam go to any country, you know, anything. Islam will rip you from your culture, from your heritage, from your family. Uh, when I make you an Arab person, you will see a guy from Somalia or from Morocco is an African. Suddenly he wants to say he's an Arab. Actually, the war right now in Sudan, what is the reason for this war? The major reason, it is Arab and African. Arab and African. The Arabian tribes, they are trying to take over the country. The African tribes don't want it, but both are Muslims. Both are Muslims. But reality never changed. That the Arab came to Sudan, the Arab are not from Sudan, and they have nothing to do with Sudan. What the, what the Arab have to do with those countries? 
This is the land of the black people. Genocide is done because simply they don't want the African to be ruling their land. And I find it very funny uh, you know how the Middle East function. Let us see if I can show you some pictures. I thought I'm leaving. <laughs> you guys are something. Okay. I will try to finish it. My back is hurting from sitting for long. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the pictures of the generals. Anyway, okay, here we go. We found one. The one on the left, on uh, I don't know, depending on your screen, the one in, in the right of my side uh, is uh, from an Arabian tribes. The other one, I'm not really even sure about him, but he is supported by the African tribes. So now the war is not about between two generals. The war is between the African and the Arab. And the funny is the one in the right they say they are Arab. The fact they are just the slaves of the Arab, rape their women, they are raped by the Arab, and now they claim to be Arab. So maybe like a hundred men came to their tribe and start sleeping with their women, and now they claim to be Arab. Because if you look at them, I don't know, do you see anything have to do with Arab? I don't see that. Uh, people of Sudan, they are black. Those are not. You know, I mean, they are mixed, you can tell. However, the war right now is about the Arab and the African. They are fighting over uh, the government. Uh, the Arab right now are sponsored, obviously, by the Russian. Uh, the African are sponsored by the American. And good luck. No. Let's see what will happen. The one who spend more money, uh, he will be the winner. The one who get more missiles, the more you know, uh, weapon. So, no, nobody can win. You see, the, the, this this war, nobody can win because this is. As I said, it's a tribal. In order to win, you have to destroy the other tribes. And those tribes, like the Arab tribes, are exist in certain locations. Uh, like now in Darfur. Darfur have war for a long, long time. Genocide. And the real reason in Darfur war is the, the Arab and the African. You know, Arab fighting African, African fighting Arab. The Arab, they want to control. They want to swallow the land. They want to subdue the African. Uh, uh, somebody asked me a question when I when we were playing the video. I forgot what the question was. What was the question? Yeah, I, I could not interrupt. Uh, I mean, all of you post questions. It's hard to find it right now. Anyway. Maybe next time, my friend, you can ask me again. How it will end? It's, it depends on the support. You see, as long they are giving them an mission and support the big beast, those are, you know, missionaries. You know, missionaries, they, they fight to kill for money. Both sides, you know. They don't really, they are not, uh, it's a country of corruption and everything is upside down. Like this guy, the one in the right, the Arab guy, who claimed to be an Arab, from the Arabian tribes, he do huge business with Wagner and the Russian. Uh, he sell them gold from Sudan. 
So the Russian, they want him to stay in authority so they can uh, stay getting the gold. Uh, the Egyptian government, they don't want the Arab guy. They want the other guy because the first one, the Arab, sponsored by a lot of Islamists, as they claim. But we do not know that for sure. So there's a lot of uh, garbage there. I posted the link for the RR make song already long time ago. Here we go. We post it again. No, the, the war can end today. If the big boss says to them, stop it, they will end. You know? But the big boss. Mm, but right now, we like in America, like we don't have a president. Those this country is messed up now. It don't have a real leaders. So uh, when there is no real leader, you know, a lot of things can happen. This is why, when America is messed up, the whole world will be messed up. You know, the only reason actually right now Iran is not attacking Saudi Arabia because the American. If the American they say we have nothing to do with it. That's it. Those Muslims will kill each other. Very simple. No. Just take take your hand away, and then you will see what they would do to each other. The Arab they never stop killing each other ever, through history. Uh, and now the same. If the big beast they say to them, "Shut up! Everyone go home." They will shake hands, they will kiss each other, and those poor people who fight fighting each other dying, nobody will remember them. Those guys will stay rich, billionaires. At the end of the war, they shake hands, they give, you know, give kiss to each other, they share the country as a solution, and the poor who fought for them, nobody will remember him. Anyway, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the question. You are right. That is a good question. All right. <clears throat> so the question is those who never heard, let me put the, the question for you on the screen. And this will be the last thing to say today. CP, I think he asked uh, those who never got the chance to become a Christian will get to heaven. I think, no, he said, those who never get the message, which means the same, right? I think I remember a little bit of it. Yeah, you see, the Bible is uh, say clearly that everyone will be judged by his knowledge. If you don't receive the knowledge, you will be judged by the knowledge, which means what? If you don't receive the Bible as a knowledge, as a warning, then God will judge you by the knowledge you have as a human being. Let us say somebody who lived in the Amazon 500 years ago. He never heard of Jesus. How this guy will be, his family is, you know, still God, he gave you knowledge. Don't you feel bad when you kill somebody? You do, right? Don't you feel disgusting when you see a blood? You do, right? Even if you don't know Christ yet. Don't you know that this is not yours when you steal it? So God, even if you don't have, let us say, a messenger who came to you, or a prophet to teach you, or a preacher to share with you, still God he gave you knowledge. You inherited that through your bloodline as a human being. For all of us who are children of Adam and Eve. So the first man have knowledge about God. The second man should be the same. The third man should be the same. So you might be far away from Adam, but still God, he put inside you. What make you able to know the basic of what is right and what's wrong. So when you kill, you feel guilty. When you steal, you feel bad. 
However, if you are evil, you enjoy it. God will judge you by that. All right? So those who don't know, they will be judged by what they know. But those who receive the message, they have no excuse. You know what I'm saying? If you receive the message, you cannot say, I did not have a delivery. I don't know what you are saying. And that goes even for even children. It's like a child, he will not be judged, but he do not know. Right? If you do not know, you do not know how you will be judged. If there is no law, there is no judgment. What is the first law I gave to Adam? God gave to Adam, don't eat from the tree. That's the only law you have. There's no traffic light. There's no tax. There's no nothing. Just don't eat from that tree. No law, no judgment. All right? However, the man he have a law which God he gave you inside you this is why you know you feel guilty when you do something wrong it doesn't matter how much savage you are And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as witness for all nations, and then shall the end come. Yeah, but doesn't mean that when the gospel gospel preached the whole world right away, you know, you see the Bible doesn't speak about dates, doesn't speak about when things will happen. Uh, the word then can be thousand of years it can be a day for this is God decision and remember uh, judgment day will happen when the whole world is totally corrupt like things become so evil when that happened a human being he been given all the chances that's it there's nobody nobody good left let us say the the number of the good ones is very tiny little compared to the the majority of the population of the earth then the day will come anyway i want to say guys thank you for being here i hope we have a good time feel free to download the video before we don't we delete them and today i hope we learn how to refute those coward liars speaking false teaching about the messiah false information about christianity they have false narrative they have false ethic, they have false prophet, they have false God, and they have false words. And the Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them. And if Islam is good, then you need to explain why Islam fruit is so evil and so bad. Thank you all. See you again soon. And this is your brother, Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly for today. Take care.